Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calderness. This episode we have special listener guest on, so we're gonna play a couple of rounds of Bad Samaritan as well as we got some questions from your boy Malcolm Rush, the man from Japan. So, well, howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. This is episode 337. Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and CO products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio, the live studio, is going to be my nemesis, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, you know, I just uh, uh, finished my 300 sets of... uh, 20 pound dumbbell curls should have made that sound more impressive <laughs> why why would you I, if you're gonna lie about I couldn't something think of good numbers. Well. i couldn't think of good numbers <laughs> what's what's the heavy weight uh 50 50 is bigger than 20 there you go yeah, yeah that's what i did marginally bigger number well I'm sure everybody in podcast land is so impressed listening to this on their drive home or wherever and they're just like wow Wow, that's Simeon Bruce. Dumbbell curl 20 pounds. I'll be <laughs> damned. Wow. All right. Well, besides Simeon's sad accomplishments in life, we are also joined by listener guest Ian. What is going on, my man? Oh, well, not too much, man. Uh, happy to be on the show. Long time listener. So it's it's cool to be a part of this. I appreciate it. Just sitting back with a natter day and some CC's pizza, and you're just ready to, <laughs> to jump into it. You got it. It's a Bud Light, but close mm. enough. <laughs> yeah. Some some of the pre-show banners melting in. So, Ian, we're going to get to know you a little bit here. So, just starting right off, how did you get into Heroclix, my man? Or when? What was the era? Oh, man, it was uh, actually the like birth of the game, like very beginning. Um, what had happened was my brother, I think it was like for his, I think he was in fifth grade, maybe fourth grade. But he had like a a field day at school so they could like go and do an activity that they wanted to for the day and uh rainbow had done some sponsored thing where they were teaching people how to draw like superheroes so my brother went and did that and they demoed hero clicks at that event and so jeff brought a few home and jeff's my brother and uh yeah i remember it was like i think like scroll technician was the name or something like the infinity challenge ones Mm -hmm. and i was just hooked instantly like i thought they were so cool and Went to Rainbow the next day, picked up a few packs, pulled the unique Juggernaut, which I used for, I don't know, probably like three years straight. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it's a long time ago, and so I've been in and out of the game a bit, but uh, yeah, been playing since the beginning. Dawn of time. All right, I dig it. I dig it. So throughout all of those sets and all of those years... What are some of the favorite your favorite pieces and combos of pieces that you like to play? Let's go oh, favorite piece man. and favorite like named theme team. Okay, for sure. Uh I I think hands down my favorite piece of all time is the uh Arkham Asylum Chase. I believe it's 099 Batman, the lamppost Batman. At the time he was very mm. cool. He got stealth on the rim of elevated which was just I guess kind of unheard of at the time. He had charge flurry, some free smoke. He was just uh, the Batman that I wanted to play. He didn't have any defense powers, which was kind of lame, but uh, a lot of perplex would keep him alive. So easily my favorite figure. I think it's the best sculpt. It was a very playable Batman at the time. And yeah, I just uh, love that figure. For favorite named theme, hmm, uh, that's a little tougher. Uh, I think like lately favorite, absolute favorite has been the Sentinels. Like the Sentinel team's, that you have so many ways to generate them. I have a ton of the uh, uncommon, like the GO2 Sentinels. So I've had a ton of fun playing those. Like uh, Usually I play with a buddy, Luke, who I've been playing with since I was probably like 13 or so. And uh, I've played the Sentinels pretty much nonstop against him for past like four or five months now. <laughs> oh, nice. Ooh. I recently got That's reminded, a tough team uh, to play against. Yeah, Sentinels are so good. Uh, I recently was reminded on Facebook, like, five six 
maybe longer ago. Is it the we master got, mold? Yeah, we got that picture of the master <laughs> mold, like the con exclusive, and like zero word on it. Mm. It just hurts because I want it so bad. It looks oh so cool. Oh my gosh. I am in the same boat, man. That, yeah, that master mold would be a ton of fun to play. Like the old one back in Galactic Guardians was a blast, and the Sentinels he made were pretty bad. So, I mean, I'd like to do it with some uh, updated Sentinels for sure. Uh, have you played the old Master Mold with the uh, the factory and the new Sentinels? Because it's kind of busted. I actually haven't. I, I traded off my Master Mold oh, probably man. five, six years ago. Yeah, I was clearing out space. I mean, my closet is just full of hero clicks at this point. So yeah. I don't want to go on too much of a tangent. But yeah, like the old one, when he first came out, there wasn't a lot of options for Sentinels, like cheap yep. Sentinels. And now there's just... So many cheap Sentinels. Mm -hmm. You can bring, like, Cyclops Sentinel on, like, his 50-point line or a Tri-Sentinel on its retaliation line. Like, all kinds of crazy stuff. Oh, my gosh. That would just be nasty. Yeah. At the time I Ooh, played him, it was the, uh, the Chaos War Sentinels. And, oh, gosh, there might have been another one. But they were just, uh, you know, single base tiny guys. Yeah, dude. Uh, looking at Sentinels now compared to like the ones from days of future past or whatever back then it's not even a comparison it's not even funny no it's not were they like close. 60 points <laughs> yeah, oh geez bad. they were at 150 125 and 75 ugh, 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 awful yeah in the span of like a year from tri sentinel coming out to then the uh dark phoenix set sentinel keeper just got like a steroid injection and became a million times better Oh Jeez. yeah. It's it's seriously so much fun. Like you have so many options to uh, you know, get your leaderships and bring in the Sentinels, or you can run a team more focused on like mind controlling, you know, with uh shoot, I'm drawing a blank on uh the Bastion and then Bastion? Stealth Sentinel yeah, yeah. or uh Cyclops Sentinel. Like they're both such great targets. And another thing too is if you're just running robot theme, pairing it with the Latvian engineer pog from the Fantastic Four starter mm. set. Yeah. Give it like a 14 defend and you're just you're putting out a lot of attacks. Oh yeah. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that team. I All play right, it right somewhat competitively, uh more more so like casually, you know. Just a good time to get yeah. a bunch of sentinels in. You know, speaking of competitively, would you say you're more of a casual or like competitive competitive meta style hero clicks player? Uh, I, what do you think you play the most anyways? I definitely play a lot more casual. Like As of right now, especially with COVID, pretty much all the hero clicks I'm playing is with Luke. And for the most part, you know, it's like we own a lot of the competitive stuff, but it's just not as fun. So <laughs> for a lot of the time what we do is, because he lives in Omaha now, I'm in Sioux Falls. So whenever we do uh, end up being able to meet up, usually there's a new set that comes out. So we'll just play like, you know, pretty much only that set, like, we'll make it a contained uh, kind of playing field. So we'll pick from the same set. And, yeah, that's usually how it goes. And we'll just play like that for hours. So, like, most recently we were just doing Spider-Man versus Spider-Man and playing with the case we bought. I found that to be, like, way, way more so, yeah. fun. But competitively um, I enjoy following. Yeah, for sure. Between the sets appeal tournament and uh, me and Calder doing the Thursday throwdowns, I think like the smaller set, uh, like inner set kind of like stuff, has been like way more fun for me lately than trying to wrap my head around what is currently happening. Honestly, and you know, it, it opens up a lot of uh, figures you might not even think about playing. And so you end up maybe finding a favorite or two, like the uh, mm, yeah the Iron Patriot from the Spider-Man set, the rare who has like the AOE perplex, like he can target everybody within six if they share a keyword, I believe, and he can modify everybody like that. He's been a ton of fun. I've enjoyed playing him a lot lately. Very nice. And then uh, let's go with um, so when you're doing like a kind of like fun build what is like your favorite format to play like higher points uh, are you doing reverse dials what like what kind of shenanigans do you throw in there uh for the most part we do like 300 or 400 points but uh we've typed up rules before like we have a game uh the most common one we play is just at the start of your turn you roll two dice and then each of those outcomes have like a different ability that happens like 
Uh, for example, if you roll an eight, which is, you know, a more common roll, it gives everybody on the map earthbound until your next turn. So that can totally throw a wrench in your plan. Uh, the most fun one on there. So if you guys remember from the Superior Foes of Spider-Man set, the like the sketch variants, there's a, a sketch variant thug that we have. And so if you roll a 10, like at the start of your turn, you can give somebody on your team a power action to call in a cosmic thug is what we call it. And so Cosmic Thug has plus one stats, and he gets to pick a power. So it's kind of like a, you know, a stupid ID card, but it makes for some fun games where, you know, you get to come back bringing in a Cosmic Thug just because you rolled a 10. Like, it is so stupid, but I don't know. It's a ton of fun. And there's uh, some more tame options, you know, like from rolling. Like, I think one gives, like, regen or, you know, there's a few other things. I can't think of them off the top of my head. But, yeah, definitely enjoyed doing that. It's a good way to throw some interesting stuff. I like there. that idea of like a, a custom figure coming from outside the game. I think that's cool. I like I like fun little uh, makeshift home formats like that. That's yeah. Sweet. I think uh, I had this. <sighs> I'm trying to think of more. Oh yeah, so like you get a nine, you can re-roll any roll in the game until your next turn. So you can make them re-roll their start of the turn Ooh. roll. Like so, there's a bunch of like different ones. We've tuned it and changed it, you know, as time's gone on, but. That's, uh, that's easily one of the more fun ones because there could be games where you're just completely down and out and then you hit a big roll and, you know, maybe you come back with one figure left. So it just makes for, I guess, more surprising matches. Yeah. I That just reminds me of, like, the really weird uh, different um, formats that were in, like, Rapid City when I used to play out there a lot. They did Power Swap. Which is awful. Never, never play power swap. Basically, they they roll dice at the beginning of the night, and you built prior to all of this, right? So they roll dice at the beginning of the night, and then they'll find out like, okay, blue powers are black powers, and yellow powers are what? lime green powers, or whatever. <laughs> really? And you were like, this sucks. Yeah, it was insane. When uh, yeah, that does what was not it? sound think, that fun. That just sounds frustrating, it, dude. And he like swore by it, and he like he had like a whiteboard, and he wrote it all out, and you you would have to remember what any of your figures did because you had no idea. You had to keep looking at the stupid whiteboard. Yeah, and that was all. They they had terrible formats, dude. That place was, you know, I was grateful because it was where I went when I started out playing Hero Clicks a lot, but it was the worst. Like the first night I ever played there, uh, every game got a random event dial. So you're a new player, and now at the start of each game, you barely know how hero clicks works. There's an event dial in play. It, it was awful. Event that dials was awful. are probably the worst uh, like extra mechanic I think WizKids has ever made. Like event dials were just terrible. <laughs> Maybe team base is ahead of that though, because geez, I really was not. A fan of team yeah. Bases. It's a team but, building. All right, game. my man. So let's. <laughs> Yeah, the team building game, and then the team bases were just, I don't know how they screwed that up so bad. I mean, I know how, because i it's WizKids, but still. <laughs> yeah. Man, that was so broken. Uh, so if you won Worlds in this, you know, I, I'd almost say hypothetical, but uh, I think with Jason Vulture Bill right now, I think it's highly possible. And online Worlds, you know, anybody could have won that. Literally anybody, especially anyone that, that likes yeah, Jack's Pizza. Only... At least one in 50. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, at least one in fifty. Is that is that so? If you won, like, it was pretty low because you had to have a nationals qualification or whatever, and then give them money, and then yeah, then that was worlds. And there's also a few worlds qualifier tournaments, but only like one person would get in there. Yeah. So if you won like worlds, and by worlds we mean like real worlds, like worlds that actually matters. Um, sorry, anybody listening, uh, and you got to like pick a figure to make. What's what's the one figure you would make and put in the world of Hero Clicks? Oh man, uh, I've definitely given this question some thought. I thought you know it's always cool to see people put themselves in the sculpts and all that. Uh, I really don't. I ugh, I'm trying to think here. Part of me would want to just make Batman again, just to be like, ah, <laughs> put myself in a Batman sculpt too. But I don't think that's what I would fall on. Oh. I don't know. I, that would probably be a game time decision for me. For a while, it would have been God Emperor Doom, but we obviously saw him in July because I was so disappointed when he wasn't in Battle World. I mean, I know why, like the the licensing agreement, I'm sure. But yeah, uh, as of right now, I don't think I have like a standout pick for that. 
Okay. That's pretty fair. My So if you were on a Batman sculpt, is it like Batman and Robin on the uh, like side of the building, but you're Robin? So you just hear like behind <laughs> Batman on the little rope? Oh, heck yeah, dude. That'd be so awesome. I pictured like Maybe a like Batman being like, beating over up a building thug. Sorry. or something. Beating up a thug. Oh, there you go. <laughs> really you anything get, yeah, like you that. you got to be the thug. Or I would just make like a, a terrible common Batman, like give him like... I don't know, like leap climb and smoke cloud. Just make him terrible. Make him a common. If you like, oh. yep, this is your 2021 <laughs> world <laughs> champion <damage. figure." laughs> Yeah, just like all the worst powers. Just give him, give him nothing. I think that'd be pretty funny. But do the Batman from the storyline <laughs> character wise addicted sure. to Venom? Uh, I don't think I've read. That oh one. yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know much. Was that like it, after it, Nightfall, or is that? I read it like a long time ago, but like, uh, all I remember vividly from it is like the cover where he's like slouched back in a chair, like all like strung out, and there's like a bottle of mm. pills in his hands that's like spilled onto the floor. Really? So, yeah, it just looks like really <laughs> uh, strung out Batman. Like he can't really even like get up out of his sofa. Yeah, maybe make that uh, into a sculpt. I'd be down with that. Just Batman, like, <laughs> drugged out on a couch. He's a dual-based character, too. <laughs> to fit the couch, obviously. Yeah, right. Get that long couch. There's, like, bags of Doritos just, like, on the ground. Yeah. It's just super not dirty. Not to go on a tangent, but that's something that bugs me in Hero Clicks is when they include like terrain in the sculpt, and then they make the sculpt like unnecessary. Like for example, the Captain America set way back when of um, him doing like a shield bounce out off a wall. It was a peanut based figure. Oh yeah. And it's just like, is Captain America bringing this wall with him to like bounce his shield <laughs> off of? Like that doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> and is then Wilson like clown right. carrying crime? this desk with him everywhere he goes yeah well you you know what i mean though like he's single base like it makes sense but like half of the sculpt is just right. a wall and like clown prince of crime is like it's a two by two figure and it's just a big wall like i get you know it's a display piece and whatnot but gameplay speaking it doesn't make any sense at all <laughs> there's my tangent <laughs> fair enough Okay, no, I feel you. Put that <laughs> in the show, not Ian's tangent. Yeah, little, All right. little headline. Simeon, you got last one, right? Or do um, you? I guess, yeah, like, for, I can tell to finish you are, our questions yeah. up, uh, just go ahead and shout out your usual venue. Oh, Rainbow Sports Cards in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. They're the best. Uh, if you ever go there, try and talk to Brian a bit. He's one of the coolest guys. Known him since I was... I think like three or four years old and uh yeah just one of the coolest guys in south dakota honestly love that place yeah and what a hard there's some good guys i cannot wait for them to start running events again it's gonna be awesome yeah it'll be really nice when uh, (laughs) we finally can to be the coolest guy in south dakota simeon yes (laughs) it's not i guess it's not that that big of a race Uh, but all right, uh, so we all got to know Ian a little bit better through that. So now we can go ahead and get started with what made us happy this week. Uh, I'll go ahead and start just because I don't want to listen to Simeon's opinions anymore. Uh, this week was a, a full-on just watch as many movies as possible, it felt like. So we had two John Carpenter classics, uh, They Live and The Thing, routed those out of my uh, to-watch list, as well as watch The Nice Guys, finally, with... What's his face? Ryan Gosling, and then the other guy, the other nice guy. I can't remember. I just, I literally just watched that like twenty minutes ago. But here we are. Uh, but that was a great movie, really good. And then Russell Crow. on uh, on Wednesday, Russell Crowe. Okay, yeah. Thank you. I know it was Russell something, it's, but I, I like knew I knew it wasn't Kurt career. Russell because so Kurt Russell not, was. Yeah, it's not Gladiator Russell Crowe. It's like older, right. Yeah, put on some weight for the role, Russell Crowe. It's pretty funny, though. He was hilarious. He was great in it. And he could still move around for being older and everything. Maybe that was stunt double. I don't know. But he was moving around pretty good in that movie. Uh, and then I watched... Ah, uh, oh, crap. What was it? Is it From the Top? Something like that. They say it about a million times in the movie. And it's this really not well-known uh, Sylvester Stallone movie oh, where over the top. he is a... Over the Top. Okay, so yeah. he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> over the Top, where he is a... 
abandoned father, trucker, and professional arm wrestler. And oh, it's wow. one of the best Sylvester whoa, whoa, Stallone whoa. movies I've had of all time. Amateur arm wrestler. Well, I don't know, Pro- dude. Professional I don't truck know. driver, I... amateur <laughs> arm wrestler. Okay. <laughs> it's, one of those, driver, amateur arm wrestler. it's one of those movies that literally could have only been made in like the 80s and like early 90s. Because the plot You're is just telling me. ridiculous. You're telling me a dad finally gets to meet his son after 10 years and him and his son go on the open road trucking and his son bonds over the fact that his dad is an arm wrestler <laughs> isn't a movie that could be made <laughs> today the and power, he has to like arm the wrestle power of to the get the custody cat, of his son <laughs> oh dude I just turned my hat I turned my hat backwards oh yeah. my gosh I'm surprised how much of that you remember. I remember it because I watched it this week. Oh, yeah. The fact that's... that you have this much of it for whenever <laughs> no. you saw it. Over the top is It like... shows you it's not it's not something a man forgets. Yeah. So that's so... just alone. <laughs> over the top. It's like Demolition Man, Over the, the Top, and then everything else. And that's how I rank Sylvester Stallone movies. Demolition Man's a little bit better because Taco Bell is like owns everything, and that's pretty cool. But over the that's top, what just... kills. No, that's what kills Demolition Man for me. If I had to live in a future where the primary <laughs> restaurant was Taco Bell, I would kill myself. That is period. <laughs> that is just without a doubt. If I woke up from one of those cubes and it was like, all we have is Taco Bell, I'd be like, all right, see ya. You would right, commit I do some not want to live in the Taco Bell kid. world. Absolutely. Yep. One could say. One could say. But yeah, no, over the top is great. It's gold. It is on Amazon for free. You don't have to buy it or whatever, like how Amazon is sometimes. So watch over the top. If you get free, it's like an hour, 30 minutes or whatever, but it's worth it's worth every second. Now I gotta go install a tricep push down machine in my truck really quickly so I can always be practicing for those arm wrestling matches. Oh, is that what you had posted on your story, Calder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the yeah. movie you're talking about? Dude, that it's looks great. Pretty corny. Yeah, it's he's gold. like, oh, it is. It is. As it's he's gold. driving this, like, you know, five ton truck down, like, the highways, he's using one arm to, like, work out his, like, arm wrestling <laughs> muscles. He just has, like, a weight thing with, like, a cable on it and, like, the back of his, like, truck cab. It's pretty ridiculous, but it's also somehow really good i don't know how it manages to be as good as it is it has like no business being good at all such a good movie it's such a good movie good. classic instant I'm gonna classic have to check it out then oh yeah absolutely listeners go go watch it anyways we talked about that for way too long so let's let's move on to what made us happy this week uh <laughs> ian why don't you go ahead go next yeah i had a pretty similar week to you called where i was like all right let's watch some shows so i finished up uh disenchantment which uh same writers as Futurama. I thought that was a pretty good show. I think there's another season coming out here soon. So, yeah, that was pretty good. And then, I don't know, work's going well. We had some uh, management changes at the bar I work at on the weekend. So, that was going over well and had a pretty good Saturday night bartending. But, yeah, just not too much going on for me Hero Clicks wise this week. And, yeah, not a whole lot outside of that even going on. So, gotcha. that's pretty much it for me. <laughs> Yeah, Disenchanted is All a really right, good series. Round us out here. I enjoyed that. Um, it is. I, it is. I've only seen like the first season, but I did like it a lot. It's really so, solid. Like, uh, I don't know. I really enjoy the writing. A lot of like play on words and. Oh yeah, just it's, acknowledging that. It's fairly like um, smart with its humor, but there's also just like a lot of kind of like slapstick comedy stuff. Uh, my favorite thing is like mm-hmm. the way the weird little demon cat walks. He, like, always has his arms, Mm. like, mummy style, like, old school mummy style for some reason. I don't know why. Mm. That just does it for me. (laughs) Um, So I I also was catching up on some movie uh, stuff, I guess. It's not a movie. It's a series. But the Stranger Things, I finally started after, like, a year, two years. I finally started season two. So I was like, "Ah, I just need to, like, watch it. I was putting it off for so long. Uh, but I started watching that, and then I started a new game called This War of Mine, which is a really, really good game, but it is so hard, and it is so terribly depressing. I don't know how many times I'm going to be able to play it. Like, I was reading the reviews, and there's people that have played it for like 120 hours, 
And then there's also people on the other end of the spectrum that like quit playing it after like one or like two hours. They just like quit and they're like, this game's too hard. I don't like it. it sucks. Uh, but it's like a resource management slash survival kind of game. And there's like a lot of aspects of like stealth and like other stuff in there. It's like a 2D. It's like a 2D kind of like, um, I don't know how you would call it, like a tower crawler kind of thing. Like it's 2D, but you can go like up through buildings and like through doors and different stuff. But you're in this like bombed out section of a city and you have to uh, try and survive like the war to- like torn area that you're in. And there's just like rebels that like sometimes you have to help people that are injured. Sometimes you try and trade with people. And then like most of the time you just die horribly because you run out of food and hope. And so <laughs> it's a really, Jeez. really fun <laughs> game for anyone that's uh feeling like too happy right now and they just really want to depress themselves for like six hours after you try and keep these people alive and then they die awful deaths uh it's a great game for that (laughs) is this on uh is this on steam or what is this yeah everybody pick this up at the the standard game is on steam it was on sale as of yesterday it was on sale for like 4.99 for the base game and then if you want to get the like the game bonus that basically doubles the size of the content uh it's like 8.99 so for nine bucks you can get not terrible i mean as as one reviewer put it at least 200 hours of entertainment so that guy's clearly a masochist Mm. i would say so 200 hours i I think even like similar games like don't starve which is like a survival resource management that and I love that solid. game. Yeah, I like it. It is, hard. but like, I think I put like 90 hours into it, and that's it. And I'm still alive on the world. I, I should probably go check in and see what's up. But like, one of the, as fun as that game is, still couldn't put over 100 hours into yeah. it. Yeah, I've never played that one. But one of the worst aspects of this game is there's no undoing things that you've done. So mm. there's no like saving or quick saving. It's like it automatically saves when like the next day starts. So. At the mm. end of the day, you have the choice to like send somebody out to like scavenge because you can't do it during the day because like soldiers might see you or whatever. Um, and then at the beginning of the next day, like that is where it's saved, and there's no way to go to like a previous save or anything like that. So if you like really mess up and one of your people die, then you're just like done. Like the games, you don't like lose automatically, but it becomes infinitely harder with fewer people in your party and it, uh yeah it's like well would you like to restart now or just slowly watch these two survivors die because you don't have enough people to survive now and it's like huh i don't know this is a hard <laughs> tough choice <laughs> jeez i made it to day 15 all right well I'm right on do you risk your life to go to cc's <laughs> I hear they have like pennies outside. If you find one, it's got free pizza. Ah, yeah. uh, all right. Well, enough of the CC's talk. Let's go ahead and get into this somewhat HeroClix podcast that we've been running here for a while with uh, with the show that's been sweeping the nation. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. And it's time to get into some bad Samaritan. So for those of you playing at home or need a quick uh, reminder on how Bad Samaritan works, it's been about a month. It's been a hot minute since we played it. I have three Heroclix figures, Simeon and Ian are on a team, and they're going to try to guess these three mystery figures. So for figure number one and figures two through three as well, they'll each have three round of clues where they'll get one random clue about the figure. Then they'll get a guess. And if they don't get it, we'll go on to round two of clues. They get a new clue. They guess. If they don't get it, we go to round three. They get a third clue. And if they still can't get it, then I get a point. If they guess it at any point uh, in between those rounds one through three, then that person will get a point. There is no uh, Team Simeon and Ian together against Team Calder. There's no – everybody's out for themselves in this game. Right? There's no sharing points. This is no – there ain't nothing – No, none of that's going to be happening with this game. All right, folks? Just get that straight. So – Without further ado, we got 20 
random like possibilities and then four free plays. So it's pretty even. I would say so. You know, 16 pretty much useless clues and then four free <laughs> plays, which lets you like go ahead and guess whatever you want. Simeon has a random number generator and then I have the list of clues and I'll be doing my best to, uh, you know, if, if the clue is like name of trait and they got a couple of traits and one of them, one of the traits is I'm Batman and the other trait is I'm not, Batman. I don't know anything else, you know, I'll probably go with the other trait, you know, so I'm, am I playing it against him a little bit? Absolutely. I want to win. So without further ado, Simeon first figure, first clue. And just so everybody knows, there is somewhat of a theme this week. Ooh. So if you're, if you're a sleuth, the and you think that maybe clue. you can the true first clue is that there's a theme that is yeah, yeah yeah you're not wrong you're not wrong sometimes i like to trick calder into giving me extra clues they don't <laughs> normally help me but uh i do what i can <laughs> also there's no looking at clicks nexus or that hc whatever website that other people go to so you have to you have to go by memory. yes none uh, of that first clue aka no one. cheating and if you have any hero clicks on your desk right now you have to Wipe your desk off and throw them all on the ground. You okay, have to clear your desk of any hero clicks. Good, good. <laughs> all right, you the like first a bunch clue. Flying into the trash. <laughs> it's going to be number 11. Ooh, number 11 is great. It is name of traits. This is exactly what I was worried about getting right away. The name <laughs> of the trait is Ministry of Self Reliance. Oh. Mm, how helpful is that? Isn't that great? That actually doesn't help me at all. Uh, that sounds like a DC ministry thing, self- because uh, Ministry of Self Reliance. I don't know. Maybe that's not a DC. Oh thing. man, uh, I honestly have no idea. <laughs> is that a <laughs> Black Widow set thing? I didn't play enough Black Widow to know. Um, I'm gonna go. And with... for anybody playing at home, sorry, Simeon, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'm still, I'm still trying to remember. We're just gonna do the normal, the normal uh, spiel while you guys are thinking. Where anybody's Guardian. playing at home, that's what I'm gonna Once go I with. give you the okay, are you gonna talk over me? You let me speak. Is that your clue? Is that your that's, guess? That's my Simeon. Guess. Is that your I final answer? I don't know. It's the gonna set be enough. all right. Yeah, Simeon's that's what I'm locked in for Red Guardian. Now, if it is Red Guardian, he'll get both the the rare and the common Red Guardian. So. When you say the character name like that, no one's going to know specifically which one anyways. So I'll give you both. That's normally how we do it. If you say Black Widow, you'll just get every Black Widow ever. So the bike, the shifting focus, blah, 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 whatever. The one from AI even. Well, she's not modern age, so no. But you you know what I'm saying. <laughs> For all those listening at home, if you want to guess before Ian and Simeon guess, before they like start, you know, if you want to pause the podcast after I give you the clue, formulate your own guess, and then hit play, that's a pretty fun way to play. It's what I like doing. Anyways, anyways, Simeon, re listen to the episodes and <laughs> play as a guest yourself. <laughs> yes, I did. Well, when I used to not be a host of this beautiful ship, this beautiful show, that's what I would do when I was out tending to the cows all day and fixing fence and whatnot. That's what I did. Gotcha. All right. So, are you actually guessing Red Guardian? Is it my go? Yeah, I can't. Simeon's, think yeah, of, I think he's locked I in. I don't know okay. what the ministry of okay, gotcha. is. Yeah, I'll go with American Son. Just called it loves America for American Son. Heck yeah, I do. <laughs> he might. But sadly, those know. boats, those guesses do not work for you guys. <laughs> We're gonna have to go on to clue number two. Although I haven't had the chance to play that American Son yet. I need to build a team around him so badly. Ugh, he's so bad. Clue number two is... He is be... bad. No, he's terrible. <laughs> Clue 17. 17 is a free play. You guys can choose anything you want, anything you need. Very popular ones are going to be things like name of trait, which you already have, or named keyword, or set. Those are all very helpful. I think point value can help sometimes. It kind of depends. Uh, opening powers or any special combats. Oh, name of a special power can also be pretty huge. So any name stuff like that, I can read through the entire list if you guys want me to. Uh, if not, feel free to choose any clue. Well, you if there's about a this theme figure. this week, what hmm, what would have the strongest correlation to finding out that theme? <laughs> uh, well, I will not tell you. Well, usually, it's you based can... off like the character names, so we'll need the character name first. Uh, not always, but oh, sure that's what you want me to tell you. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead with character's name. 
Oh, character's name? Yeah. Okay. Going. F- no, I can't tell you that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, legally, I, I, legally I, obligated. I cannot tell you who the figure is. The set is going to be Rebirth. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> so you, you guys were right. You said earlier, it sounded like a DC set thing. It is. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Good thinking. Because it sounds like the opposite. Somebody of, already knows like what, who this uh, is. John Constantine would be. Um, and Rebirth is great because I have played so little of that that I have no idea. Like, Prez Ricard <laughs> is the only figure from that. I know he doesn't have Ministry of Self-Reliance. Uh What's a gosh? I think she was a like a common. Maybe she was also an uncommon, maybe a rare even. Uh, like uh, Deathstroke's daughter. What's her name? Ravager. That sounds like a trait. Is that Ravager? I think she was an sounds... uncommon. Um, there's Jericho, which I think is possibly Deathstroke's son. Uh, my DC knowledge is pretty. I'll go bad. with. I'll go with Ravager. I'll I'll put that guess down. Yeah, I'm going with Ravager. But she like works alone, I think. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go with. Uh, I want to go with uh, Mister Terrific because I feel like that would be one of his things. But maybe it's like Veronica Kale or something. Uh, if that's even someone from the set, um, I'll go with Mister Terrific. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's not going, Mr. Terrific. So locked in round two, figure number one, the Ravager and Mr. Terrific. It is going to be neither of those figures. I'm going to go to round three, baby. So maybe I can pull off a a win here. I'm excited. Third clue is going to be number four. Ooh, number four is number of clicks. This really does not help you much i'm sorry they have six clicks of life wow what an incredibly unique number mm. <laughs> nice six clicks oh gosh uh, i yeah i do not know mean anything if... about rebirth it's not one of the support figures so it's not like veronica kale or amanda waller or uh any of those people ministry of self-reliance rebirth um Jeez. Doesn't ha ah, gosh. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of like any character that like would be part of like some sort of ministry of anything in that set because it se- that just seems like such a weird trait name. I don't even know what that trait would do. Uh, there weren't a lot of <laughs> yeah, generics really, in that uh... set, were there? Were there any generics in that set? No, there was none. I remember. Isaac was telling us, he's like, yeah, I bought no Rebirth because why would you if there's no generics? It's like, well, good point. I remember there was that like 14 move Superboy. He was pretty cool, but I don't think he's uh... You don't oh think he's a part of the ministry? <laughs> um, hmm. I think I'm just throwing out like oh, gosh. Doesn't sound like a flash thing. Like I use the rare flash from that. It's definitely not Shazam. That's like the two figures I can think of right now. Well, and six clicks long means that it's it's definitely not like Billy Batson or Prez Ricard. Nope. Any of those like cheaper people. It could be like Mr. What about like Nightwing? It's possible. Um but I don't Is think that's part like a of something like that trait that like other people have. What's the the rare uh, orphan? Is that the name of the lady? That's she's like uh... a rare, and she could like do some weird like bonuses to attack and defense depending on how many people she was next to. That's who I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with orphan. Going with orphan. All right, Simeon's locked in. Ian. Oh, geez. Uh, yeah, I think I will. I'll throw Nightwing out there, maybe. Sure. Nightwing and Orphan. These are the final clues for figure number one. Will our boys get a point? Will I score a point? Tune in next week to find out on Dial H for here. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'll tell you guys right now, spoiler free. Uh, I will be getting the point for this figure. Huzzah. <laughs> oh. This is none other than 
Is it zero rebirth. Zero thirty two. The uncommon. The dash flash. You're or kidding, right? The flash oh. for those at home. <laughs> this is the Justice League of China oh, speedster oh, flash himself. The Ministry Man. of Self Reliance is protected, perplexed. Now probability control but only from characters without the justice league of china keyword now that you say it that that sounds like yeah something that like that set of figures would have had dang it so figure number one went to me let's go ahead and see if we can tie the game up or if i can get a sweep let's move on to figure number two simeon give me a clue my man all right figure two clue number one is going to be number 12 or number two Number two is going to be point value. This character is clocking in at 20 points. Oh, geez. Ah. That almost narrows it down, but it doesn't for me. <laughs> There's so many characters that are like 15 or 25. Uh, 20 uh, points Proteus on the dot. 20. Oh, That's so someone we should say. Line. Yeah. Yes, all figures are going to be played at their highest point value. Their oh. green click line number one. So 20 so. points is their top cost. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. So it can't be Billy Batson then either, right? He, he could be 40? Correct. Gotcha. Yeah. Hmm, 20 mm. point figures. Ooh, geez. 20 mm. points is not a lot of figures, to be honest. Um, even on, like, lower dial. Uh, I'm just trying to think of one. So, in a in the, like, All you need is one. that a character is, like, uh, like a Star Trek, Star Trek Ensign, where they can be played at 20 and you pick the starting line, or 15 and you don't, do they con are they considered 20 points? No. They'll be played at 20, and then we'll use for like powers and reference for top dial. It'll be their first click. Okay. So even if they have multiple starting lines, can be played I'll... at 15, and you would roll to determine the starting line, we're still going to use click number one. I'll go with the uh, shield. What are, they, what are they called? Shield operator? Shield diplomat? Uh, that's also one that's probably 20, yeah. I was thinking that the, the shield generics from Captain America, the shield agent or whatever those guys are. Oh, the uh, the aim like aim red, aim white, those guys or no? No, I was thinking Captain America, but you're also naming ones that could be because aim red is also twenty. <laughs> um, do you know what I'm talking about, Calder? Can I just say shield? I I know agent, what you're talking uh, about. You mean. And you're meaning specifically the ones that can be played on their alternate lines. Yeah, whatever that oh. guy is. There's also a shield uh, character in that set that is like a normal four clicks, and then there are ones that have the alternate point values or the alternate starting lines. I'm I know going, what you mean. I'm locking in with Diplomat. You're locking in with Diplomat. Double shield. Simeon is going for <laughs> shield agent. S dot H dot I dot E dot. All right. It is going to be <laughs> neither of those. We need to go to round two, figure number two of clues here. Let's uh, let's see what you guys got here. All right. See if you get something good. Second clue is going to be number 12. Number 12 is going to be any special combat symbols. Are you guys ready for this? None. This character does not have any special combat symbols. So Dang. it is normal boot, normal pith, <laughs> normal shield, no stripe, and normal starburst. At 20 points, I for sure thought he'd have at least indom. Yeah, I was I was expecting sharpshooter <laughs> and flight. And all that all that indom. Oh shit. <laughs> Maybe duo yeah. attack. Jeez. I don't know. Most 20 point figures, I mean, you expect to see it. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh so I think I'm going to go with aim red. That seemed like a good guess. Ian threw that out there for me. All right. Stealing guesses because you're not smart enough to think of your own. I got you. I'll write the only other piece. like 20 point figure I can think of is like Happy Hogan from the Captain America set. So I'll go with that. Oh, wait, no. He has okay. Flight. Does he have flight? He's given flight through his move special. Yeah, yeah I don't I'm think he has it on his dial. He only has it on click one, I think. 
Okay, yeah. Because I know for sure you can knock him off of it, but... I'll go with that, then. All right, going for Happy Hogan and Aim Red. It is going to be... Just so you know, he does not gain flight. He can carry people with flight, is what you're thinking of, though. Oh, God. But I gotcha. Anyways, it is going to be neither of those. <laughs> so... I'm feeling pretty comfortable moving into round three here, mm. potentially getting a shutout victory this week. Third clue is going to be number 13. Third and final clue, number 13, is opening movement power. This character has stealth. Ugh. <laughs> All right, it's I'm not say that gets <laughs> rid of the... Stealth? That definitely gets rid of like the Starfleet guys. Um, trying to think of like the other people that uh, twenty points see. with stealth. Is there hmm. the Assassins Guild dudes are like fifteen? They have they have, they have charge on their opening click. Oh, that's know? true. They have like the traded stealth kind of thing. Um, I pulled a bunch of those and. Uh... Luke played like an army, like ten against me. So <laughs> yeah, they're pretty solid. I remember those guys pretty fi- fondly. Stealth twenty points. Oh, dude, um, scroll infiltrator. Fantastic twenty four. points. I have no idea. Yeah, he's twenty points. Um, it's pretty solid. Simeon, guys. you didn't tell me that you had no idea. I, I think everybody knew. Okay. I <laughs> truly cannot think of a locking point in. figure. Uh, You're locking in. Uh, scroll. What was that? Infiltrator. Infiltrator. Yeah. Infiltrator. Gotcha. And locked in. Simeon. Now we're just waiting on you to have a wrong guess here, so we can move yeah. on, and I can sweep. <laughs> uh, I want to say, gosh, I know the Starfleet ensigns come in at twenty, but I doubt that they have stealth top click. Um, I don't know anything about the Star Trek ooh. figures, man. Never, never touched them. The nuke clones. Good. It's a safe way to be. Stealth. I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch those figures either. Um. Simeon, say literally anything, please. Literally uh, anything at this point. I, I'll go with the Hydra from Earth X because the the man, Thank you. the man Hydra guy that looks like Falcon from Earth X is twenty. But I. It's okay. You know, I know he doesn't have Both the hydras have sidestep. You're locked in, though. It's okay. I'm going to keep you locked in because it doesn't matter what your guess was because Ian already said it. It is the scroll Damn infiltrator. Right. Let's go. 07 from the Fantastic Four. Oh, that's yeah, from Fantastic All right. Four. Oh, okay. Okay. I was thinking from the Captain Marvel movie set, and I was like, I can't remember the scroll from there, but it makes me feel yeah, a little no, silly. silly. The main set common. I played like a brigade of him with the uh, common Green Lantern. I think I had like six or seven of them, and I was Ooh. just carting them around. It was a ton of fun. <laughs> so I got a point. Ian has a point. Simeon needs to get a point to tie this game up, in which case I'll have to choose some random, who knows, tiebreaker figure. But let's go ahead and move on to figure number three, clue number one. First clue is going to be... Oh. It's going to be number three. Number three is going to be set. This character is from the Fantastic Four set. All right, now is when I'm going to start thinking about Calder's theme. So we've got a scroll infiltrator. Mm. We have the Flash. And we have something from the Fantastic Four. (laughs) So the theme, like, imposters or something? (laughs) Um... I have no idea. It's very, uh, it's a very bad theme. I can't think about. Uh, I'm just gonna go with my favorite <laughs> figure. Uh, no, I'm not, because that's too obvious to Calder. I'm gonna go with one that Calder doesn't think is that obvious. I'm gonna go with Red Hulk from the Fantastic Four set. Okay. All right. I'll, okay. I'll take. Simeon uh, locked in with the Red Hulk. I'll take Living Laser. All right, Ian locked in with Living Laser. It is going to be neither of those. (laughs) Figure number three, clue number two. Second clue is going to be number 17. 
Ooh, number 17 is going to be a free play. So I can tell you guys anything you want to know about this figure. Keyword. Uh, let's see. We got significant appearance, uh, point value, set number of clicks, rarity, set number, name, keyword, generic keyword, improved movement or targeting, top dial stats, name of a special power, name of trait, any special combat symbols, opening movement, attack, defense, and damage power. Those are all separate. And those are all of the possible clues you guys can choose from. I think uh, name of a trait or rarity would be the best way to narrow this one down. Because we already have the set. Let's do it. Which one do you want to go with? you want to go with name of trait or rarity? Let's do name of trait. Why not? Name of a trait. All right. The name of a trait is going to be reforming the Fantastic Four. <laughs> well, that narrows it down. <laughs> okay. I think that makes it a Sue Storm, if I'm correct. Uh, so I'll say, I think there's a Sue Storm and then, like, Invisible Woman. And that's the amount of names that they get. So I'll go with, uh, let's see, Reforming the Fantastic Four. I'm pretty sure that's the Sue Storm thing. I've only played it, like, a hundred times, so I don't know 100%. But I'll go with uh, Invisible Woman. Okay. Simeon's locked in with Invisible Woman. Ian. By that logic, I will take Sue Storm then. <laughs> if these are two Going separate. with Sue Storm. Okay. <laughs> and sorry, guys. It's actually Invisible Girl. Uh, but you actually are both wrong. <laughs> Thank goodness for my sake. So we need to go to figure number three, clue number three, and see if I can take home this slightly lopsided, not quite sweep, sort of not really. All right. At least Final keep clue. Simeon from getting a point. Final clue is going to be clue 12. Clue 12 is going to be any special combat symbols. This character has indomitable. Indomitable. Wow. Wow. Indomitable, Fantastic Four, and the form, the new Fantastic Four trait. Reforming the Fantastic Four. Oh, reforming. Not form the new Fantastic Four. Um, Reforming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got to, like, I'm thinking it's, it's got to be one of, like, the original members, but. Um, Reforming the Fantastic Four. Yeah. I've got to, it's got to be, like, one of the original four, so. Um, we've got a scroll infiltrator. We've got a the flash. I'm gonna say I wouldn't think about the theme too hard. Yeah, to be honest with you, it's not as obvious as other times. I'm gonna go with. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with Human Torch because there's three of them in the set, and I'm okay. I'm pretty sure reforming the Fantastic Four has to be one of the main four, but I'm not reform. I'm not even sure like what that does. I really I did not play a lot with the uh, Fantastic Four set, other than like scrolls and Doombots. <laughs> um, which is the best keywords in the set is scrolls oh and Latveria. So honestly, what so else do you need to play? The Super Scrolls are a blast. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're awesome. What about uh the the unique rare the Franklin Richards? I'll I'll go with that Franklin Richards. Okay, locked in with the Human Torch and Franklin Richards. It is gonna be neither of those. <laughs> Sorry guys, but I will get two points this week. Sadly, not a sweep, hmm. but not a tie game because Simeon really drops the ball. He wasn't wrong in that it was a member of the original Fantastic Four. It is none other than The Thing. The thing. So you had a Reform one in three shot Four. of guessing it. I, I'm going to assume That's every uncommon version of the Fantastic Four had this trait. Oh, was, geez, probably, really? the uncommon thing? <laughs> I, I will assume so. This is the uncommon thing. The uncommon okay. Mr. Fantastic has a trait reforming the Fantastic Four. So does Invisible Woman, and yeah, so does Human Torch. So you weren't wrong with your guess. Except for the fact that the Thing is the only member of this version of the Fantastic Four to have Indom with that trait. Uh, that the only oh. thing to give it away. That should have been the end. So the theme, the theme this week was a little rough 
And if, if you weren't paying attention to what made me happy this week, you wouldn't have gotten it. But I watched a slew of movies, including uh... The Thing, uh, They Live, which is Scroll Infiltrator being represented by. Uh, and this actually has nothing to do with the, the actual movies I've seen. But The Flash is what I'm using to represent Big Trouble in Little China, all films directed by John Carpenter. <laughs> Oh, Fair geez. enough. How did we not Fair enough. on that theme? Yeah. Had had the thing been first, I might have caught on, but maybe not. Probably not. Probably. Uh yeah. We'll see. But to be fair, I've the hey. uncommon Fantastic Four, like the main four Fantastic Fours in the uncommon slot, because those are their ones in red. The only one I've ever put on a team is Invisible Woman, so that she can swap people of like fifty points in. And that is literally the only reason that I've ever played that piece. I I do not like any of those figures from the uncommon <laughs> slot. Yeah, they are oof. They were rough. And that's gonna conclude Bad Samaritan guys. And we'll also include our guest part of the show as we move on to just me and Simeon gonna go ahead and talk about community and answer some Malcolm questions. So Ian, before we let you go, if there's any shout outs you wanna do before you uh jump off the podcast, now is your time to go ahead and get them in, my man. <laughs> Well, already shouted out Brian being the uh, coolest guy in South Dakota, which, <laughs> great. But, uh, no, I don't think I have anything else to add, man. I appreciate uh, letting me be on the show. It was a ton of fun. And, yeah, look forward to the podcast. I'll keep listening. Absolutely. We're going to have to get you on when there's, like, actual news happening in the world. So we can yeah, talk that about would be something great. next that time. Would be great. <laughs> For sure. It was great uh, having oh, you actually, on. Actually, wait. I and, do have uh, one shout out. Sorry. Oh, good. Uh, shout out to the the guy on Facebook who makes dice, Stan uh, Sifka. Is that how you say his last name? Stan Strakowski. Strakowski. Strakow- oh, geez, I'm not sure oh, where yeah. I pulled that from. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I ordered. Seriously, no clue. Maybe that's just who knows. But yeah, I ordered uh, like five sets of dice from him, and they all came out great. I got some Iceman ones, some Nightcrawler ones, uh, Doctor Doom, and then some custom ones from like an indie video game no one's ever heard of. But yeah, he made them great, and the commission fee was next to nothing. So yeah, he did a great job. And seriously, if you like custom dice, go to that guy. Oh yeah, Stan is absolutely a wizard yeah. when it comes to making some but yeah, amazing that's, dice. Uh, that's everything for me. Dice are great. All right, sweet. Well, thank you so much for coming on, my man. We'll see you. Yeah, catch you later, man. All my friends are out there in Hero Clicks land. Take it slow. Wait for them to ask you who you know. All right, Simeon. Now we got to jump into community section. Ooh, uh. There are dozens of us. Dozens! We have a couple of questions coming in from Malcolm Rush, the man from Japan. We're going to be talking about some sets, ladies and gentlemen. He says some sets are made to be played only within that set. Other sets are made to help out, fix or improve sets. And now I'm not going to say these sets actually have good design, any of these sets at all, because let's let's be realistic. Some sets are just sets that come out. I, I, I would never honestly say any set is actually made to be uh, to help Intra-set? or improve other sets. Because, inch, no, let's just get past Intra-set? this. Whiskey has no idea. They have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> so let's not. I'm not even going to justify the fact that they might have a shred of design insight. I'm going to say... Unquote. WizKids designs every set to be intraset, which in their original article, when they used those weird phrases, uh, they they designed ninety percent of their sets to be played within that set specifically. Um, they don't like cross play the sets to test them out. I don't think so. Occasionally, something will slip through, and it's like like Jason Wingard is a great example that they used where they designed it within this one set. And then if you look, it, oh my gosh, it works with other stuff. There's bystanders that are generated in other <laughs> other Whoa. formats, no other way. sets. All uh, right. Kind of like how uh, well, let's, Nightbreaker... We, we rag on WizKids. Yeah, it's true. Uh, we rag on WizKids maybe a little too much sometimes, but I really, I'm not only, really, I'm never going to apologize to those people. Those people. So let's go ahead and get into the first question that Malcolm Rush has is, which sets are best funnest or easiest set uh that is aimed to be played within the set so i I basically took this as what set works the best within itself or is the most fun to play within itself simeon what do you have the answer for question number one here so this question is pretty easy um 
I think the sets that like work best when played within themselves and are most fun within themselves would be any indie set. Doesn't matter how far back you go. Um, I guess unless you're doing like a set that's only got like six figures or if it's like Lone Ranger or something, it's probably just not fun at all. But um, like Street Fighter, WWE, Turtles, uh, Star Trek, Lord of the Rings, all those properties are really fun when played in those sets specifically. Uh, I think a lot of them lose some of their ability or not necessarily ability, uh, but a lot of them lose some of their like oomph when played with newer sets or just like other main sets in general. Marvel tends to have the uh, power creep on lock. So when you throw like WWE or turtles against a Marvel team, it usually doesn't end up going super well, but it's still fun just to play those within themselves. And then as far as like main sets go, I think superior foes of Spider-Man was a really good set within itself. Uh, same with Nick Fury agents of shield, because you could make within Nick Fury agents of shield, you could make like a huge, like just in like that set alone, you could make like a thousand point shield theme team and a thousand point Hydra theme team and actually have a really fun, like back and forth battle. Uh, there wasn't like one side that was like too powerful or anything. Maybe the side with, uh, the watcher eyes, Nick Fury, but, um, Otherwise, yeah, I think those sets were pretty fun to play with themselves. I went with Secret Wars Battle World. I think I probably have the world record for uh, Battle Royale losses playing this set for sure. And maybe I don't. Anybody else thinks they lost more Secret Wars Battle World in a span of three days than I did. Uh, let me know. But I played a ton of this set and I, I just really enjoyed how it worked within itself now in a sealed environment you pull regent or black panther it's you know you're donezo you win everybody else loses but in a within itself type of deal the keywords are all you know this little crew has its keyword this little crew has its secret wars keyword and it's all fun i enjoyed it a lot even though there's obviously like more powerful ones like battle world other is just better i think it's got like the hulks and stuff versus of course battle world the valley which is very much normal normal people um but that's okay and i really enjoyed playing a lot of the set just because it was number one it's fun to play in and there was lots of synergy and if you wanted to just make a normal avengers team you could you could build an asgardian team which is like one of the few sets you can make an asgardian team besides an actual thor set which is cool so i heavily enjoyed the secret wars battle world set for sure the next question malcolm has is which sets are the best or most useful set that helps other sets and why ah so the set that maybe improves other sets the most like an intra set is what he means here please uh, don't please don't hurt me like this uh fun vernacular i learned actually that and intra and inter are like terms used for things i've never like i've never heard of intra set or interset but intra and inter are like a, a set of words that are used for like other other objects other other phrases um so best or most useful outside of like their own set uh so this is pretty easy and i could go like way back into golden age with this but i decided not to because i think the three most prominent ones in modern are pretty good examples and that'd be abpi Earth X and uh, Spider Man Venom Absolute Carnage. Uh, you can throw Fantastic Four in there, but kind of only, not really. Uh, and the reasons why those are most useful for like working with other sets is ABPI and Earth X both have a ton of equipment. Um, they have a ton of characters that work well with generic keywords. And then, of course, Spider Man Venom Absolute Carnage has amazing team building synergy the ability to t grab a bunch of uh generic keywords and turn them into named theme teams and then also combo those with figures from other uh, like other uh generic keywords or spider-man family makes it really good outside of that set so all the chases from uh spider-man venom absolute carnage and then I think Fantastic Four will work with that once the next Fantastic Four set drops because you'll be able to do the whole 
uh, wife swap Sue uh, Storm thing. What is it? Uh, Invisible Woman's thing that she does. You'll be able to do that with any Fantastic Four character that comes out in the future. Just not yet. Right on. I think equipment is huge, and that's kind of what I use to say the same. I didn't say the same sets, but I think that was the same uh, level that I was using to compare how much it helped other people. And I went with War of Light because the power batteries, the constructs, and not so much the figures, really. It's pretty much just the power batteries and the constructs in that set. And the possessors. Uh, and, of course, the entities. Sorry, yeah. Power batteries, constructs, entities. My bad. Uh, entities are the biggest one. Power batteries and constructs go hand in hand. Excuse me. But the entities were huge. So I think it has to go with that because for a slew there in 2014, really for the years it was legal, that slew of time, we probably saw some of the most unique competitive teams besides maybe the last two years. I think they've all been pretty unique as well, um, especially recently with Spider-Man and everything. But I think I think that set helped out a ton because you, when you would see teams that are making like top five, top eight, whatever, they were all wildly different. And it was just a different dude with an entity, different dude with a battery, resource tied to it which you know kind of made it all the same in the same way but no one was playing the same figures but they were equipping them a lot of the same stuff you know yeah. it was just cool i think i think what entities and constructs did you know people can argue as much as they want about how lame it was to play against someone who's playing entity which it was lame it sucks waiting for them to pick powers all the time like come on dude speed it up um but I think without a doubt that set had the most use outside of its set. Being able to make anyone a member of any of the Lantern cores and then drop an entity on somebody was huge. So I'd have to go with War of Light that helps out other sets. Yeah. In a similar vein, I think that's what the new Galactus uh, Herald dial is going to be. It'll kind of open up. It, uh, we haven't seen it yet, but maybe in like the next couple sets we'll see something. Um, but it's kind of opened it up to... like some like figures that were probably like a B or C tier, like not the first thing you'd grab for a competitive team, but you slap some power cosmic and some other like pretty decent bonuses onto them. And all of a sudden you have like a character that's worth playing a lot kind of thing. Oh yeah, totally. I can't wait to see all the random figures and even like uh, happy little hero clicks the Galactus Herald tournament, seeing all the different figures people are choosing for Galactus Herald there is also really cool. So Galactus is going to be thrown around a ton. A ton. All right, number four. Oh, sorry, number three. Which sets help fill out missing characters that were left out from a different set? So maybe a set came out and you're like, man, they missed a slew of figures for that keyword. And they were like, boom, filling it out, baby. Make it look all nice. So I think the obvious ones are like the Fantastic Four chase theme helped finish the Battle World uh, theme. Um, ABPI finished out the chase 10 million BC for the most part. There's two convention exclusives that are also set in there. Um, and then I guess like technically any set that revisits, like any Spider-Man set that gets made might revisit spider-man characters that haven't been clicked or haven't been clicked recently or like same with like any dc set might bring more like titans or uh who knows like justice league dark or something like that into the fold and so any set that revisits franchises usually adds some more to it i went with the sort of the same way basically just I mean, it's a pretty straightforward question. What what set has like more figures to that keyword? So far for me, I guess I'm going with Fantastic Four and Captain America and the Avengers because they have the only other figures outside of Earth X to have figures with the Earth X keyword. And there's a ton of figures we're missing from that set. I we could do another that. half Earth X set, half something else set because Lord knows Earth X was not a real Earth X set. <laughs> we could do another half Earth X set and get all of the figures we need still from Earth X. I honestly hope House of X has some of the Earth X X-Men. That that would be so cool. But I know they aren't going to have any of those because WizKids 
will always make an X-Men set that that I will never buy any of because it sucks and it's going to suck. See, they they um, finally unmasked the Earth X Daredevil. Like they finally uh think they know I did, but I now now I've got to like buy all of that comic run because I I forgot it was happening honestly and I love the Earth X universe. So I need to buy that comic run anyways, but I'm so behind on comic books and like what is coming out and what I need to like add to my pull list or whatever where I didn't even know they were doing an EarthX story until I saw that article that like Daredevil has been unmasked, which I guess it's not Deadpool, but it's also not right. probably Matt Murdock. I don't know who it is. I didn't click the rest of the article or whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm but, not going to um, give it away. I'm curious. Um, yeah, don't be spoiler. I'm not going to give it away, but yeah, it's, it's basically somebody who has very Deadpool ish powers, but isn't Deadpool. Um, Yes. But yeah, so Obnoxio just... the clown, <laughs> basically, it's... or uh, what's what's the one dude from the Deadpool X Force? Um, oh, Madcap, Madcap. Yeah, it's kind of like somebody. I mean, we already have like, a bunch of figures that basically do that. But I think his whole thing isn't regeneration. I think it's like resurrection. I don't think it's regen. It's resurrection is his power. Ooh. Whatever the difference is, I don't really care. Um, but yeah, I won't spoil yeah. the, the actual name of the figure. See, now that makes me want it to be one character who I heavily enjoy. So we'll have to see. Anyways, moving on. So yeah, any set that fills out the EarthX keyword is what I would go with pretty much. Number four, which sets are the most difficult to build from within that set and why? So for this, I actually went with EarthX because... As Calder mm. stated, it is very hodgepodge together. It is almost like 50-50 uh, a Spider-Man set and an Earth X set. So while a lot of characters have the Earth X keyword, um, it's hard to build like a super functional team out of just the Earth X keyword. And same with like you can build a pretty solid Sinister Syndicate team from that set, but you definitely can't build a good Spider-Man family team from that set. And uh, honestly, I don't I don't think you can build a great Earth X theme team. You could do like uh, Captain America, Resilient, and the Hulk, and some other stuff. It's not gonna win you any tournaments. It'll be like a fun team. But as far as like something mm -hmm. that's difficult to build from, I think Earth X stands out to me. Um, and then I went with Nick Fury, Agents of Shield, just because. You had to buy a lot of that set to get enough generics, or you had to buy a lot of like generics off secondary market to get enough for an actual theme team. So if you wanted either Hydra or Shield or anything in between, it took a lot of the generics to like fill those out, uh, unless you were playing like the higher point figures, and then it was just like an Avengers team anyhow or something. But I think Nick Fury was pretty hard to play within just itself. Mm, that is fair. I can see that. For me, it's I'm going to go Golden Age here, and I love this set. The Deadpool set is awesome, and it's really cool. But besides, there's about two theme teams you can make. I mean, taking away like Z virus and stuff, it's such a random hodgepodge of like there are some Thunderbolts, there are some Heroes for Hire, there are some like Mercs, uh, whatever the Deadpool mercenary whatever it was called, Deadpool Family, Deadpool Core, thank you. But, like, the generics were all very within them own selves. So, like, Secret Empire was a keyword, which is, like, there's just that generic and then the one named guy. Same thing, like, Ultimatum Soldier, there's that generic. And then there's, you know, uh, what's his face, Flag Smasher. So, to me, building in, like, just Deadpool was a really difficult set to, like, build out of because there's all these teams that are about half filled out and it's just weird. Deadpool yeah. said it's just so much weird, wacky stuff. Deadpool Especially and the X-Force like, uh, sort of had a bigger theme on X-Force, but the original Deadpool set was just everywhere, all over the place. I mean, like, just X-Men alone, but if you tried to put, like, Banshee on an X, uh, X-Factor X team, I think he has that keyword. I can't remember, but yeah. Yeah. It's uh, not a ton of stuff from that set to choose from as far as... Uh, when you go, yeah, and honestly, maybe even Deadpool and the X Force itself is also probably equally as hard to like build out of because then you have like 
Ajax and like what's his face? Mistress Death shares no keywords to anybody. Hellcow, the Fenris, like there's not enough Hydra in that set to build around a lot of these figures. Like unless you build an X Force or X Men theme team, you can't build anything else out of Deadpool. I was thinking yeah, Generation X. Yeah. For Generation Assassin, X, there was exactly Warlock. three characters in the Deadpool set. Oh, yeah, characters. Generation X. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, could, you could use... And then, like, there's some Serpent Society it. thrown in, and then there's, you know, two, like, some Squirrel Girl people thrown in, but they only have the animal keyword. Like, yeah, Deadpool, both Deadpool sets. I think maybe just because Deadpool is so random, and he teams up with a bunch of people. I think it's just the way it is, but both sets are difficult to build, like, theme teams out of. For sure that don't purely exist like within that set pretty much you know like with just in that set it's rough it's really rough all right next one is going to be which sets that whiz kids messed up worse and what part of whiz kids mess up the most with that set so sets they really flubbed up simeon and an aspect of the set you thought they were just like oh no 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 oh so, no so this is not at all a controversial opinion, I don't think. But uh, Team and T four, um, mm. they really messed up just the whole idea behind it because of Team and T four uh, turtles unplugged. I guess I don't know exactly what they called it, but the idea behind it was that it was based off of the Turtles arcade game, which is an amazing idea. If you look at a lot of the figures in the set, they've got like a digitized pixel look to them which i actually really liked a lot of people don't but i actually really liked it when you get into like the generics like stone warrior and you get into the um the like some of the rares like karai and the rat king and baxter stockman and all of the super rares they are all already like pre-made um they're already like reused sculpts. So almost half the set was reused sculpts. Uh, I think it was the commons, uncommons, and then the chases. So most of the rares, all of the super rares. No. Hold on were... a second. Those chases had completely different sculpts, Simeon. Yeah. They're on rocket skateboards, for goodness yeah, sake. Yeah, so the, the, the totally chases different. were also re-sculpts. Of the the commons from the set, or from Don't like say. the fast forces, um, but yeah, I think they really flubbed it. If they had just gone one hundred percent in on the video game aspect and just like really hammered home like the so I really like the figures, um, like General Trag. He's got level boss flashing orange. The first time each game, General Trag would be KO'd. Instead, turn him to click six, then heal him one. If an opposing force has one or two characters on it, otherwise heal him two. Protected pulse wave. So, like, the the fact that they had, like, level boss flashing orange, and the really cool one was the fast forces main turtles had the continue tokens, which was, like, uh, the quarter tokens. Oh, those were cool. Yeah. I think that was, like, the first time I played the fast forces... Um, and I was like, oh, you can use like these continue tokens from anywhere on your force. Your opponent gets 25 points cause it's a quarter and you get to keep like that character. You click them to click two and then you get to keep that character on your force. That was amazing. That was really cool. That was like one of the best parts of like the whole set was the fast forces. Also the shredder from the fast forces was really good. Um, being able to play all of the turtles against the shredder. And actually have like a pretty decent battle was pretty awesome, but in the main set when you have resculpts and really like just kind of phoned in characters like Baxter Stockman and the Rat King and uh, the super rares like really didn't have all the super rares from that set had Tales of the TMNT and they really didn't have a whole lot of synergy with that. Um, it just really it was kind of like a letdown. Like if you pulled mm. a super rare from, especially since it was a gravity feed, if you pulled a super rare and it wasn't like Alopex or Krang, you were just kind of disappointed that it was like a turtle because they were all kind of bad. And then same with the chases. Uh, when I first like started buying into the set, I pulled a couple of the chases 
And I was just like, there's nothing here that I really care about. So I was trading my chases for like generics and um, like Alopex and like any of the rares that I was missing and stuff. Because mm. even though I really liked the uh, pixelated kind of like style they did it, I just think a full set of pixelated art would have been a much better idea. Um, I don't know if they were trying to appease some people by doing it like half and half, but I think what they ended up with was like kind of like they kind of just didn't do it ha like full either way. So like you've got some characters that are just re-sculpts from previous sets, some characters that are like the pixelated versions and cool. And then at the end of the day, you've got a majority of a set that's, not going to get played by most people. So that's the one that I think they really flubbed. Um, and then I, I'll also shout out rebirth because rebirth to this day, I still think it felt like it was like four years old when it came out. Like the point formula yeah, so was really bad. weird. There was no title characters. There was no equipment. The chases didn't seem like they were fully fleshed out. Like, Compared to the KC chases from World's Finest, it felt like the Rebirth chases were halfway done, and they were just like, eh, yeah, they yeah. don't need any more clicks of life. We'll just cut it off there. Um, no stop clicks on any of them. Nothing super interesting. It was just weird. It was weird that I was paying so many points for a character that wasn't even half as good as some of the Marvel stuff. And so, yeah, I feel like Rebirth as a whole... There's like a few redeeming characters in that set, but I feel like as a whole, it's pretty bad. I'll absolutely agree with that. As for mine, this may come as a surprise to some people, uh, not a surprise to a lot of people, for those that like kind of pay attention to the show. Uh, but Captain America and the Avengers is a set that I think WizKids really screwed up. Like, I'm like the biggest Captain America fan ever, and by. There's halfway so through Captain the preview, America's in the I set. realized and there's so dude, many Avengers dude. in the set. Yeah, <laughs> that part is cool. Like that's all like well and good, but as someone who it's so, like my favorite version of Captain America is the '80s to '90s Hotline Captain America. It's him and Falcon, and D Man shows up for a little bit. Captain America has Jack Monroe as Nomad as a sidekick for a little bit. That whole like kind of that version of captain america is my favorite version we did get of the captain and i wanted of the captain for so long a normal captain not a one with the hammer so that was awesome so big ups there there's not a single steve rogers above the rare rarity the chases are not themed around captain america whatsoever they're this throwaway chase theme that's just like they all have the clicks effects again and you're like wow cool uh who the hell cares? Some don't care. Didn't ask. Super don't even need Thanks it. Thanks for like, ruining. In my opinion, Absorbing yeah, Absorber Man, Man is not absolutely bad. does not need a clicks effect. Namor um, also doesn't need it because he makes water terrain yeah, already, and, and the we get clicks water is just terrain water markers, terrain. Yeah. Uh, so like, there's there's a lot of characters unless it like attaches to an opposing character, the clicks effects hardly are mm. needed. Uh, it's usually things that can already be counted with like some sort of token uh we already have hundreds of characters that have the ability to give opposing characters tokens without a clicks effects cliff clicks fx looks cool on like the base but when they first announced it i was really expecting it to be like spread throughout the set and the fact that it was chase specific really mm -hmm. kind of turned me off just chases there's that, and then there's the whole... It's Captain America and the Avengers, but we also failed to mention that it's also Captain America and the Thunderbolts and the Masters of Evil. Out of all the issues of Cap that I own, just from that standpoint, he has fought the Masters of Evil by himself zero times by himself. As an Avenger, sure, a bunch of times. He's also fought the Thunderbolts kind of as an Avenger and by himself zero times! Like... Maybe he's fought the Avenger, you know, Thunderbolts once or twice, whatever, but like it doesn't happen a lot. I don't think of the Masters of Evil and Thunderbolts as being Captain America specific villains. I actually think the Servant Society are very Captain America specific villains, but you put them in a Spider Man set some time ago. Another thing that hurts about the Captain America set, and I could go on like all day about this, is they put this big emphasis on different people that held the Captain America mantle, and we got all the people 
that were already in clicks form that have held the Captain America mantle. Yeah, new Josiah X is cool or a new uh, whatever. Isaiah Bradley is cool, but we already got him. Peggy Carter, she's cool. We already have her. Not as Captain America, but we have her. Falcon, we already have him as Captain America. Same Let's do, too. you know, yeah, same sculpt, which is just rough. But like after Captain America gets goes under ice in the 40s, three different people pretend to be Captain America. The one dude that was like uh, the super patriot or whatever, just patriot, I think, was Captain America. The spirit of 76 was Captain America. And then in the 50s, there's the commie smasher Captain America with Jack Monroe as Bucky. And then we also get John Walker. We never got, we didn't, number one, it sucks we didn't get a new John Walker in this set as US agent. We didn't get him as the super patriot or as Captain America when he was Captain America. Like, if you're going to say you're going to focus on different people that have held the mantle of the shield, make ones we've never gotten before. Like, as a Captain America fan, I'm just so incredibly let down. This was such a set for just not me. It was for your average Marvel dude who sort of gets stuff like when scott porter was talking about the videos and it was just all i just didn't care about any of it because it really wasn't captain america based and i love talking about captain america comic stuff and this set had such a little bit of that also to continue with the rant what is with the mini iron man sub theme nothing made me want to punch a whiz kids employee more than getting pepper pots happy hogan three iron men shifting focus to iron man when we could have used those slots to fill out more shifting focus captain america and then also Arno, St- are you serious? Gosh, get it together, Wiz Kids. Oh, and the super rares are abysmal. Besides the obvious Captain America villains, like you know, what's his face? Machine Smith was great. I loved that, you know. And then uh, what's his face again? Do 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 do. Modok, right? Like those are both good enough Captain America villains. I'm okay with that. And then we throw in immortal hulk cap had nothing to do with that story black widow you know he might have had something to do with her i honestly don't know what she is from like at all i have no clue iron heart she's got nothing to do with anything with captain america i don't know she's not even an avenger what that's what hurts zeke me stain the zeke stain zeke stain iron boom man. there's another one right uh captain america no <laughs> exactly like that's another thing like that's yet again like that's an iron man character War Machine, sure, he's an Avenger, but that's an Iron Man character. Like, what was with the mini Iron Man sub-theme in this set? I hate it. And the Mandarin, straight up an Iron Man villain. Are you serious? You really threw the Mandarin in here? I want to... Oh. Whoever decided on this terrible set list of characters deserves to get punched in the mouth because this is probably (laughs) the least favorite... This is one of my least favorite sets of all time, and it's a Captain America set, and I think that just goes to show how, how much they screwed up this set. And I I didn't even mention like the Avengers that are in it that I don't care about because it's Captain America and the Avengers. He spends time with the Avengers all the time. So I'm okay with Quake, Maria Hill, Nick Fury, uh, Sharon Carter. Those are all fine. Cap works for S.H.I.E.L.D. That's okay. It's it's all this other that has nothing to do with Captain America that just cuts me, cuts me deep. And I hate it so much. By the way, this (laughs) Spider-Man, this Spider-Man is not an Avenger. And is also not related to Captain America at all. It's from like the Spider-Man video game. Captain America is not in it. The Spider-Man, guess what? We got a Spider-Man set coming out later this year. And we had to throw the Spider-Man in the set. That also bothers the hell out of me. Hey, Scott Porter so, yeah. did a voice on that game. So good. Good for him. I'm glad that Scott Porter was <laughs> Harry Osborn. I, I genuinely am. He was also Winter Soldier, which is cool. I love Scott Porter. It's great. That would be like my dream to be a bunch of random like superhero comic characters and voice acting. That would be awesome. Listening to my voice right now. Call me anybody like look at this. I'm Captain America. You know, like, come on. I can do anything. And my normal voice is just yeah, great. I'm like, come Wolverine, on. As far as... <laughs> Bubble. I'm the Wolverine. <laughs> Call me for voice. But <laughs> fun, fun off like hero hooks <laughs> tangent here. I did once do voice work for a friend for Wolverine for a Lego stop motion video he did. Was it good? No, it was bad. Oh, it was it was bad because this was like 10 years ago, but I was still the voice of Wolverine. I was like, come here, bub. You got a question. The best there is at what I do, and what I do isn't very nice. <laughs> oh, and it's probably sounded exactly like that. But the guy who anyways, did the longest Captain America row said, was a pretty good Wolverine. Was the uh, baby. That's like an audio book version of uh, oh, okay. the Wolverine story. But yeah. Anyways, that is me ranting about how much I hate the character selection of the Captain America set, and I'm mad that I 
own a complete copy of this set because I hate it. I hate it all. <laughs> Anyways, question number six. Wow, finally. Really moving on. Sorry with the rant here, guys. Which sets had the best or worst? Bells and whistles. <laughs> Ding. Ding. Oh. The uh, bells of Notre Dame. All right. This fire desire. Uh, that's all I know about Quasimodo. Uh, anyhow. Um, yes. The best and worst Good bells job. and whistles. So the best bells and whistles, in my opinion, is shifting focus. I think it's a really cool mechanic. It's a great way to take a character like a Superman or an Iron Man who theoretically should have the ability to be like uh extremist iron man where he's got like the nanobots in his blood or bone marrow or wherever he's keeping it should be able to have right. like any kind of swiss army blade kind of like you know thing at any time it's a great way to do that without costing him like 175 to 250 plus points i like the shifting focus idea same with Superman. I hate paying like 200 points for Superman when it doesn't work exactly how I want, but the ability to pay like 90 points or whatever and shift from fast Superman to strong Superman to tough Superman to shooty laser Superman. Um, all we're missing is a resurrection Superman that like rests for six months while a robot and steel and... Uh, Annihilator and the other guy all battle it out. But anyhow, I really like shifting focus. Um, I think some of the worst bells and whistles, some of the things that they throw into sets, especially like recently to just sell the set without any, like without adding any work or effort, I think is the ID cards and the team up cards. Um, when that's like a main selling point. So an XXS, when that came out, we kind of already knew that ID cards were important to the gameplay. Uh, XXS came out, so Xavier School, X-Men Xavier School came out, and we knew that the ID cards were going to be important, and what they did was they introduced student ID cards, which were two points cheaper than all other ID cards, and then they introduced faculty ID cards, which were extremely rare to pull. So not only were you not necessarily getting like the best um id cards in like your boosters when you pulled them you also like had id cards that you could potentially call in like a student cyclops because he was a student at one point so you had a faculty and a student cyclops uh luckily you didn't have a faculty and student wolverine but they fixed that with their summer op event to give you the wanted posters so there were two Wolverine ID cards at one time. But as a main selling point for a game that is based around 3D miniatures, pre-painted like miniatures, figurines on like the table, having these 2D objects like ID cards and team-up cards is just super lame to me. Um, things that I really like are objects, even resources to an extent, Things that actually have like a physical space. Something that I really love that they haven't done in a while is the 3D terrain. The like 2x2 two two terrain. And at a certain point they even had like the invisible jet was terrain and stuff like that. That was really cool. The only thing we have currently is the WWE ring. Which is just kind of sad. I'd really love to have more like terrain options. Whether it's like you know, uh, like the Magneto slash Exodus from uh, Dark Phoenix Saga. If you could just pull those figures off and then like click it to click like 22 and that was the terrain dial because they're already on like a pile of rubble. That would have been a great terrain piece. I don't know why they didn't do it. It kind of makes me sad. Uh, another things I, th another couple sets that I think they kind of had some bad bells and whistles was the Deadpool shifting focus. So I already said I liked shifting focus. The Deadpool sets shifting focus was way too like over encompassing. They had way too many Deadpool too much options. Too good thing is a bad thing. Yeah. 
there was like so many options that just were never going to get used so many like and especially since they count towards your sideline it was just kind of ridiculous at a certain point if you were going to play a deadpool and then you needed all the shifting focus it was like hey i see that you like collecting these figures but uh you've got to collect seven more to have the complete shifting focus set and uh especially since like the yeah. what was it, the bathrobe deadpool had like three versions of himself three versions. So, yeah yeah and then uh, going back into Golden Age, the Alter Ego or like Revert powers were both really bad. I'm glad that they've fixed those. Uh, they really fixed it with like the the new Spider-Man Venom Absolute Carnage set, how that works. Because the Alter Ego and Revert things were just bad when they first introduced them. The Ant-Man that was like had to be given a capital move action to shift... So uh, like not yeah. only do you have to waste one of your action tokens to shift, that's also the thing you do that turn for that character. And then revert dials, a lot of times they were only on like one or two clicks of the dial. So if you didn't somehow just land on that and also be able to give that character like an action, I think it was like a power action or whatever, that character just couldn't revert. And then you lost the whole ability to do that and you became a big pile of nothing usually got KO'd after that because it was like towards the end of the dial. And uh, yeah, not saying that like the revert and alter ego, I don't think were huge bells and whistles for their sets, but man, they really missed the ball on those kind of mechanics. I think one of my favorite bells and whistles is anything that has removable stuff from the sculpt. So the original Captain America set comes to mind. I really loved the taking off a test tube for Weapon X breaking out or Captain America thawing from the ice, as well as like Falcon, like his actual bird came off his sculpt. Now, did it fall over all the time? Yeah, absolutely. But still came, you know, Red Wing came off the sculpt, which is great. And then same thing like Monkey Joe came off the sculpt sitting on his little stump is cute. I love I love characters like that. Bystanders that like are physically removed from the sculpt. Human Torch, yeah, yep. Human Torch has the removable Nova Flame, which is cool. Um, I believe Invisible Girl has the Invisible Shield that also goes up, which is really cool. So, like, they use this later with like Magneto uh, and several other characters, but they haven't. They've strayed away from it. I think the most recent has been, I guess, like the pop off of Pog Ultron. thing. Well, yeah, well, I, mean, I think the some... the pop off yeah. Pog technically was like with the Batman who laughs. You know, so once they sort of figured out how to use stuff like that, like that is cool in in the same way that like Monkey Joe and whatever was cool. Like, so there's that. But yeah, you're right. Age of Ultron had. um, Was it Kang? Had like, what was that? Bubble? Was it Kang? Kang had a yeah little shield, bubble yeah, shield or whatever. It was okay. So, you know, I think that stuff is really neat. And I also really like countdown clicks. I think those are cool. And they only use that in, like two sets, I believe was like. Thor the Dark World and then the Captain America set. It was the only figures to count down clicks that I remember anyways, but I did like countdown clicks for sure. Uh, Bells and Whistle didn't really care for is kind of ID cards. Uh, they never worked really within the set. And then it, it was only just really, really powerful in team building. Cause like if you did sealed with the set, then it's nine times out of 10. It's just not going to work. You rarely ever pull the ID card. Maybe in Nick Fury Agents of Shield, if you pull like the level one or level seven with a shield character that you could use it with. But, you know, and straight up in Shields, there was no Black Knight, Red Hulk, or She Hulk to pull in that yeah, set that you could use them with. For sure. Uh, a lot of those early ID cards, we either never got that character or we didn't get. Some I'm not gonna say a lot of the ID cards, but some of the ID cards enough to make like a a protest against. There was enough ID cards where we did not get like the character until that ID card rotated out of modern. Um, for DC, it was like Swamp Thing. Uh, I don't remember if there was a like John Constantine ID card, but yeah, there was like several ID cards that like not only didn't come out in the set, they didn't come out in like subsequent sets, which just seemed like mind blowing that they would do that. Yeah. It's it's really bad design insight on WizKids' part, for lack of a better term, for their intra set in, in whatever the word is. I don't even remember. 
All right, number seven here is which sets that was not a full set you wish it was. What hero characters you used to fill out the set? So any sets you thought they they did not fill out the set within itself, Simeon. So I'm gonna start off with like the worst example that I have, and that's Secret Wars Battle World. For the most part, Secret Wars, I actually think Secret Wars Battle World had a good amount of Secret Wars Battle World in it. Like there wasn't a lot of the set that like didn't deserve to be there. But they did leave out a ton of stuff that should have been there, including all of like the uh side stories and the like one shot stories. So there's a ton of characters that could have been included enough to fill out like a full set of its own. And I think I would have rather had rather than like two man thing, like a man thing commander and a man thing soldier. I would have rather had like a daredevil. That's a really good chef. And I don't know what he does, but like, man, that's a fun story. There's also an X-Men story where they're all like a lot older and their powers are weakened. And like Cyclops is uh, like laser beam or whatever you want to call it becomes like a remote control clicker so he can like control robots with it but he can't like blast robots and it's weird but it's a it's a good like little side story it's it's kind of bad but it's also pretty funny because it's like cyclops is like shacked up with uh emma frost and they're both like really aged and kind of like out of shape and stuff and cyclops is like that's when he realized he shouldn't have went with the chick that was like good looking. He should have went with the girl that was the the nice girl you grow into old age with instead. I bet Emma Frost sure. is just no fun to be around when she's not hot. I bet she's just that I seems mean, really bad. Never mind. Let's grab that. When she dies, she doesn't even seem fun off her, to be around diamonds. So be oh, like, here's a hundred and like geez. twenty pounds of diamonds. So <laughs> um so that's my that's my kind of controversial set because I think for the most part they did a good job. Like, is a grown woman should be more than twenty pounds of diamonds. Sorry, keep I, going. Yeah, Never mind. I, I don't know. That. I'm throwing out a number. I don't you know the facts. I told you at the beginning of the episode. I told you I don't know numbers. Um, yeah, I think a better two sets than uh, Secret Wars Battle World would have been Elseworlds and What If. So both of those were like half sets because they were like our summer OP event kind of things. Uh, came out with the Word Ameridroid of, yeah. and the Skyscraper Wonder Woman. And both of those sets had... Uh, I mean, so this was the sets where they tried to reintroduce the REV system. So they had the like rookie experienced and veteran versions and sure they gave them kind of like different backstories and stuff but they reused the sculpts to the point where they like realized this was just like bad um you should never pull a rare that looks the same as your common and this was like the set that you definitely would do that there was some good things in the set. So, like, Cosmic Spider-Man was really cool to get. All the super rares, to be honest, I think were pretty cool and pretty worth pulling. I did not care for any of the chases because, like, I think when it comes to what if, there's so many good what if stories that it just really annoyed me that uh, they didn't, like, hit on some of, like, the better ones. And then they had, like, a runaway sub-theme that didn't even, like, fit into the set. And I was like, if you're going to, like, go 15th anniversary and you're going to do what if, you could just, like, go, you know, crazy. And this was before, like, they knew that Marvel was going to allow them to just make whatever. But there's so many Marvel what-if stories. And same with Earth-X. Like, Earth-X, at least Earth-X, or not Earth-X, jeez, at least Elseworlds. Elseworlds, at least the chase theme was from an like a really popular yeah. Elseworlds kind of style story. Uh, what if it was just venomized characters? Which sure, they're maybe they're from what if character like what if stories, but um, there's a lot of these like sub you know not canon stories like off canon stories that are just really good. And the fact that we got, like, a bunch of generics in both sets and you kind of had to pull, like, super rare and higher in both sets to get anything worth having was just really, really disappointing. Um, 
Like the sets are redeemable with a few of the figures, but they're still kind of sad. And then yeah. uh, the last two Star Trek sets, they were originally billed as being one full set. So it was going to be like the next generation set. They got split into two gravity feeds. We lost um, two figures. We lost the Davidians and we lost Mark Twain. And we have like the 3D renderings, but they've <laughs> never been posted anywhere other than like the accidental drop that they did. That's really depressing to me. Um, I really liked uh, Mark Twain and the Davidians. That was like the same storyline. And I really liked that. There's also just a ton, like an absolute ton of characters from all of the Star Trek sets that have just never been made. And I get like some of them are only appear in like one episode, but I mean, they're already giving us characters that only appear in one episode. So why not just go all out and give us a full set with, you know, all of the characters that we didn't get. Also the chases from that, uh, those two sets were never on screen. Um, the mirror, Jordy LaForge, Jean-Luc, uh, Riker, and Beverly Crusher. That's from a comic series. It's not from the actual series. And then uh, the last thing I could think of was from the Orville set. So the Orville set was not a set. It's just a like starter. It comes with a map, not a two-sided map. It's a single map, and then you get eight characters. And I feel like if they're already putting in the time and effort to do the eight characters, the map, etc., they could have just gone ahead and done a gravity feed for that as well. You know, bump it up to like 18 or 20 or even 30 characters. There's enough generics and there's enough bad guys. Like, we don't really get any bad guys in this starter. Technically Isaac, but also not technically because this is from like earlier in the series, Isaac. But yeah, it's just, it's really disappointing that like this starter set not only, Jeez, man. <laughs> yeah not only does this starter not work well with other hero clicks sets you can't even it's not even one of those starters where you can play it against itself it's not like three good guys three bad guys it's like this whole set of pretty average yeah. costed or like higher than average costed and like average stats characters that you can't even play. Like, I can't take a full Orville team against a Star Trek team. Star Trek just has way more uh, synergy, and it'll just destroy it. It's ridiculous. But, yeah, that's a set that I think... Yeah. I mean, clearly they just pumped it out to have, like, that on the shelf, and people that like the Orville can pick it up, I guess. But, man, what a missed opportunity, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I could live without anything Orville ever, but sure, Orville. Now, that's, that's what we really need. You. Anyways, um, yeah, no. watch it, how dare I? How you dare watch I? it. I bet it's good. No, I bet it's good. I don't mean As a show. not Star Trek fan, I should. I just mean you should watch it. Or <laughs> oh, I'll drive to where okay. you live, and I'll, <laughs> I'll clockwork orange you and force you to watch oh, Seth uh, McFarlane for like five hours straight. I just, he's just not funny. He's really not. I can't watch Family Guy. And like I thought I would enjoy A Million Ways to Die in the West, and it's just not funny. He's just so not funny. He thinks he's funny, and a ton of people think he is also funny, and I am not one of those people that thinks Seth MacFarlane is funny. He is You're not funny, though. bro. Anyways. Apparently. Apparently. Anyways, I've already talked about EarthX and the Captain America set and why I think those are both fairly incomplete. So I'm going to talk about the only set that to this day, it's only missing one figure, but it's missing the most important character to the entire storyline. Yes, that is biased. Technically, probably maybe Thor is slightly more important in this storyline, but also he's Thor and he's just kind of, you know, boring. But, uh, Captain America's absence, and I mean Steve Rogers as Captain America, his absence in the Fear Itself set shows that WizKids did not read the main Fear Itself storyline at all if they think that they did not need a Steve Rogers in that set. I would say we start off, 
I would say number one, he's the pinnacle character of fear itself. I think he, the focal point is around Steve Rogers. We start off with Steve Rogers and we end with Steve Rogers. All right, guys, start off with Steve Rogers, agent of shield, you know, trying to police and help New York as it goes crazy. And we end with him back as captain America lifting Mjolnir in some of the most epic versions of captain America ever with all the guns, with lifting Mjolnir, with getting the shield shattered and broke all spoilers for fear itself, by the way, like a seven, eight year old comic storyline, whatever, but fear itself is such, it is my all time favorite Marvel storyline. I know there's better, but still I, I have read the trade that I own of fear itself you know forwards and backwards it is tattered and messed up it is my go-to comfort storyline to read i love fear itself and the fact that we are missing that captain america from fear itself shows you how how terrible with kids is for not making that a figure now obviously it would have aged terribly like everything else in that set pretty much but still captain america is plays just way too big of a role in that set for him to be completely left out it's messed up and i hate it and that is the only set that I. Would. he plays a bigger role than monkey king are you saying we could have just like left oh, monkey king or frost troll so, out of that set this seems to be the worst part with whiz kids when they build sets that are based off of certain storylines they seem to know exactly what parts of the storyline i read and cared about and which ones i didn't so secret wars battle world i didn't read the main storyline i read like the Howard the Human, I read the Red Skull Magneto team up storyline, and I read all the Marvel Zombie storylines, and then the Valley. So they got the Valley. They didn't make any of the Marvel Zombies, the ones I cared about, because I didn't read the one with Black Panther in it. They did not make the really awesome Magneto and Red Skull team up, which was like their own version, like Suicide Squad, with like Winter Soldier, Electro, whatever. It was awesome. And, you know, they, they sort of did the Valley, but they, they missed a lot of people from the Valley, which is only like maybe four or five more characters. And then they underpowered the Valley a lot. So, like, they really missed the mark for me. Oh, and uh, the Spider-Man. I loved the Spider Island set. And they only made, like, the spider versions of people. And then the one version where it was they mutated somebody else. Okay, sorry. Two versions. Iron Goblin and then the vampire Captain Marvel. They did not make the abomination hulk or like whatever that was or the werewolf captain america or like some of the other like filler like really awesome versions of characters like they half did that one spider island they they half did which sucked so and then when it comes to fear itself they did all the side story stuff like they did they had the main characters right they had the worthy they had the mighty the mighty show up for a panel and then they they sort of have some talking as the mighty when they have their super powered versions of their either like Wolverine armor or like spider knives that help him sling webs better. Or some <laughs> BS that makes no sense. Right. Like the mighty show up for like the last five pages in the last issue. Like that's it. It's like they show up. They're there. Whatever. And it's so rough. And then like the whole like monkey king story the dracula story all that stuff has nothing to do with the main storyline of fear itself storylines i read of fear itself were the howard the duck fearful four storyline which they had none of which is fine whatever howard the duck's kind of a throwaway storyline anyway so that's fine and then the deadpool storyline where he makes the walrus think he's one of the worthy by like gluing a bunch of stuff to a big sledgehammer and dropping it on the walrus in like the same vein that the other hammers dropped around the world. And then he made the walrus think he actually had like powers. And then for some reason he actually somehow like got him or something. I don't know what happened to that. So and then Deadpool actually had to actually take care of the walrus, which is hilarious. So like that would have been two figures you could have thrown in that set from a side storyline I cared about. So yeah, majority of the time when they make sets based around a storyline, they basically choose the parts of the storyline I don't care about, or if they do any parts I do care about, they do them either the characters I don't like or they like half do them. So that just seems to be the way it goes, specifically with those two sets, Fear Itself and Secret Wars Battle World. I don't know what it is, Wiz Kids. They it's like they somehow know what I read and what I care about. And they're like, let's not make that. Because still to this day, when I think about Fear Itself, when I was just starting out and someone told me, Oh, there's Fear Itself, Hero Clicks, I was like, Whoa, that's awesome. And I, I go to HC Realms like everybody did. And like, oh, what's in the set? Come on, there's got to be Captain America. This is like my favorite storyline right now. The fact there's Hero Clicks is amazing. And I, I go there and Captain America's not there. 
And I'm like, perhaps the archives are incomplete, you know? Like, I just like, something's got to be wrong because he's the main character in Fear Itself. Like, you've got to have Cap. He has so many awesome versions. And my friend's like, oh, well, Fear Itself is still going on. And I'm like, oh, okay. So in my brain, I'm like, no one has pulled Captain America yet, ever, anywhere, apparently, in the world. He's the secret you know? chase. Yeah. Yeah, he's the super secret chase with the set of no chases. So by the end of Fear Itself, we'll have Captain America. Nope. Nope. No, we did not. And it's still to me, that's WizKids' biggest failure more than anything in the world. And I will never I will never forgive you for that. All right. <laughs> me and Simeon ranted a very long time on that one. So we get to go to the last question, which we can also rant for a very long time on because it's a good question. What would you like to be in a future set and which characters would you include? So what would you like for a future set? Which characters would you include? So for this question, I'm going to have to direct people back to any of our thread deads where we've covered, uh, we've covered threads that did custom sets that like haven't been actually made. So two of my favorites from those thread deads are the, the MCU movie set that the guy did. Um, so you went back from like the very first Iron Man, maybe even like the first Hulk movie. I can't remember, but he went all the way back and then like worked forward in like order through the movies and made characters that made sense for each movie. That was a really good set. I can't disagree with a lot of like the choices that he made for those. And a lot of the figures that we saw in that thread were better than the ones that we've like seen actually made. So there's that one. Uh, if I had to go like crazy pipeline dream, there's the Jojo set that we also reviewed and that was awesome. yeah, the Jojo sets just like, uh, between the stands and the like Hamon energy dudes and everything in between. Um, I finally caught up with like the Jojo series as far as what we have released. Um, so I guess it's, uh, what golden wind and, um, I finally caught up to like Golden Wind, and I get like the man, yes. the mangas way ahead of that, I guess. But just a really cool set overall. Um, personally, if I was gonna make something, I would do something based around like Doomsday Clock, which would of course just bring more Watchmen into the universe, uh, the HeroClix universe. Um, and then I really like the DC Vertigo properties, so like uh, Lucifer, Sandman, Preacher, V for Vendetta. Uh, if you've read any of those, you kind of like know what you would expect. Um, there's not a lot of wiggle room in like <laughs> what those characters can do or like who they are. It's pretty like standalone kind of stories. But I think if they did like a full Vertigo set, like 80 figures in a Vertigo set, you could easily bring a lot of these like older kind of like Preacher's fairly old. Uh, Sandman is pretty old. Um, V for Vendetta, of course, has been made into a movie and it's pretty old as well. Um, it's not like they're pumping out, I guess Sandman's pumping out more issues now, but it's not like they're pumping out a ton of like new content for those. And so it'd be pretty easy to make like standalone, uh, figures and sets with like pretty reliable dials for those things and i think it'd be pretty easy if they just threw it all under like the vertigo flag since they already have dc properties they might as well dip into like the the vertigo thing absolutely absolutely for sets that i would want to choose that would like sort of fill out characters that are already introduced with now i don't think this has real grounds but funko pop has recently, it seems that their releases and the releases WizKids does seem to correlate somewhat with like just being allowed to use that creatively in toys. So Funko like last year made or like two years ago, it's been a while, has made a, a Venom line where they did a blind box series of Marvel characters as Venom. This is when Marvel was pushing all the weird Venom covers and then they made normal Funko Pops as like characters as Venom. I have a Captain Venom Funko Pop a mini pop keychain, a Captain Venom pop pen. It's ridiculous. This is dumb. This is dumb. And now Funko is pushing Marvel Zombies. They got Marvel Zombies pops. They got Marvel Zombie, like, wacky wobbler, whatevers, right? So I want, if WizKids is allowed to do it again, 
it's really iffy on when they can make zombies and when they can't. Because for a second there, it was like, oh, you can you can make zombies, you can only make villains. Diamond Select made Magneto and Sabretooth, and like that was it. And in that same year, two years, WizKids made all the zombie chases for Guardians of the Galaxy and Deadpool, but it was only the villains, right? And obviously, a long time before that, they did make the zombies as heroes. And it was this weird thing where Disney was like, we don't want the heroes to be villains. We don't want them to portray them as zombies. Zombies are always bad, blah, blah, blah. And yes, the heroes, the Marvel heroes in the original Marvel zombie storylines are villains, obviously. Like, But it just follows it from their standpoint as zombies, which is what makes it a slightly more unique zombie story. But... Marvel Zombies is more than just zombies. There's really cool survivors in every version of it. So I would love a full Marvel Zombies set. You would obviously have to do some rebalancing because I think every other figure in the set having the uh, food and virus traits coming back to life and infecting is just really bad from like a balance standpoint from intraset or interset, right? So there's something you'd have to mess with there or just make the survivors that good at countering them where you wouldn't have to worry about it. But I would make a full Marvel Zombies set. So we do, and I, this kind of sparked it earlier. I think Brody Stockhouse uh, on the Clickstaff Facebook page made like something about wanting Marvel Zombies. So number one, if you can't get the rights to Ash, I get it. But Ash as an Ultra Chase, and I'm the biggest Ash Williams fan ever. I would so buy that Ultra Chase at $300 right off the market. You got no idea. Maybe you got no idea. So like Ash Williams and his Marvel Zombies would be really cool. Filling out the original team of Marvel Zombies, I think, is necessary. So making an Iron Man, Spider-Man, Thor, Captain America. We never got a Luke Cage or an actual Wasp figure either for like the main team of Marvel Zombies. We need those. And then we need all of the mini Power Cosmic versions where they could just shoot the Power Cosmic. And these could be like the rare, super rare versions. And then maybe for the chases, because we've already gotten them before, so might as well make them chases again. Give us specifically the Galactus versions of the zombies, where we only have Wolverine as Galactus, where we should have Giant Man, Spider Man, uh, Hulk, and Luke Cage, and Wolverine as Galactus, I believe. So, like the Galactus version. Oh, and Iron Man. So, like all of those should also have Galactus versions. I think that'd be fine for chases because we already had them before. So, we don't need more. Like, in, I know we had them as chases before, but still. And then we do all the survivors. There's this really cool story with Kitty Pride as a survivor. She like sets up a minefield and she's a sniper. And then like, you know, she runs through walls. Obviously, that's what Kitty Pride does like to keep her son safe. And then you can have her son where he's like a mix of her and Colossus, which is really cool. But he's dressed up as Wolverine and he actually like stabs a zombie in the eye, which is hilarious. Then another great survivor is when it's like the second or third main Marvel zombie book. We have Sandman that is infused with like nanobites that can cure zombies or really just consistently kill them without Sandman himself being infected. We have the Spider-Man where he turns into a good guy. We have the James Rhodes as Iron Man, which is like a really awesome version of Iron Man, which I love. So we can do all the survivors. There was also like Asteroid M stuff mixed in there, which was cool. So there's plenty of cool survivors to take from Marvel zombies. There's plenty of cool zombies to take. Uh, the Squadron Supreme and the Invaders were both made as zombies in different storylines, which is cool. And probably one of the best storylines is the Ducky Dozen, where Howard the Duck and Dum Dum Dugan team up to fight the zombies in like World War II Hydra zombies. This is like the same one with like the Invaders zombie storyline. And that's just great. We get a ton of one off characters that all die horrible deaths. But they're called the Ducky Dozen, and I just want the Ducky Dozen in Hero Clicks so bad. Like Blazing Skull is like the only member that you can get in Hero Clicks. So it's like Howard the Duck, Blazing Skull, uh, and Dum Dum Dugan are the only like people that exist that like weren't already part of like the Ducky Dozen for whatever reason. This is another region uh, reason I like Jack of Hearts and Battlestar because they were also in their own like Marvel Zombies like independent storylines. There's a great storyline of Howard the Duck with Machine Man and Marvel Zombies. There's just so many good Marvel Zombie storylines. And there's so many bad ones because they are there are bad ones. You know, like it's it's tackling zombies. So it's kind of just bad and campy. But if you're along for the ride, you're along for the ride. So there's tons of different zombies and survivors that I think should be made into a full Marvel Zombies set. That would be my dream set of all time. And then that will if we got nothing else to say. I know I talked for a very long time there. That will conclude our Malcolm Rush question block for this week. Man, good questions. I loved answering them. Yeah, pretty good set of questions there. 
I, uh, my voice, however, not having water for like an hour and a half is not loving it. So let's let's finish up this podcast with a Jedi legend hero clicks tip of the week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. This is very, very specific. So I'll say I'll preface this with uh, look at your team that you're building. And if you really want to use a certain aspect of that team, look up all the figures that have the keyword and see which ones like work the best. All right. Like this set, this one is specifically about X-Men, which is I want to throw up just thinking about mutants at any time ever. I hate mutants. I cannot tell you how much I hate mutants. This is specifically about X-Men. I'm sorry I'm not an X-Men fan, Jedi Legend. It's not a dig at you. It's just like, man, I hate the X-Men. Uh, get a, Anyways. Get a Robert Kelly over here. Yeah, absolutely. I would have voted for Robert Kelly. Yeah, Robert Kelly for president, clearly. 2024. Anyways. Uh, anyways. So I would this, this specifically goes into like making the most out of the X-Men team ability. But if you want to build around like any specific character or whatever, look up specific synergies right if you want to have a big avengers team you should probably look into some of the avengers in the captain america set that have the whole avengers assembled you know roll d6 trait same thing with like uh what would it be all the brotherhood that use their team ability as part of their traits just like so much better you know same thing with the scrolls and if you're like ah, i should give a scroll shape change because now it's just better you know like pay attention to team abilities pay attention to team synergies and just really dive into people like with the keyword. Like if you're gonna go golden age and you want to build a Sentinel theme team, totally look at Justin Safer. Like he should be on your radar. So he goes, uh, to me, my X-Men, maximize your healing with these four elixir heals in combat and up your t- uh team ability chances, which is nice when paired with the two clicks of healing via Cyclops trait. And if Angel is carried, the TA is free. Add a House of X hope for perplex and power copying or a UXM hope. Not UXM, excuse me. Uh, Wata, Wata XM, Wolverine and the X Men. Watix, Hope. Yeah. She's also great. So, this is kind of how it reads. This is like the GSX Cyclops. He can use leadership. When any friendly character uses the X Men team ability, they heal two instead of one. That's pretty awesome. Like, that's just amazing. Yeah. And then definitely there's the elixir. If you're doing like the back and forth Sorry. healing thing. Yeah. Like, when I was. Uh, healing up onslaught with x-men it would have been way faster and better to heal up two at a time then there's the elixir which is support but his target may be adjacent to an opposing character and then the static version of that power is when a friendly character uses the x-men team ability you increase their d6 result by plus two which means you might you won't get hurt right you don't want to roll that four through one and take the unavoidable damage so instead it, it makes it only a one to two take an unavoidable damage which is just beautiful or it's the other way around i can't remember but either way and then there's the team bonding, which is if Archangel carried a character this turn, either he or that friendly character can use the X-Men team ability as a free action. So it's normally a power action. You only heal one click. And then normally there's a two-thirds chance that you yourself are going to take a damage after healing somebody else. So it's more of a trade for I take a damage, you heal a damage. And these are just all ways where it's like you can heal up two instead of one. You can potentially not take any damage. And then, oh, the team ability is free, right? Instead of a power action. So... Just keep that in mind when you're building characters. Don't don't be afraid to dig in the golden age bins if you're you know if it's casual night whatever to really make a certain aspect of your team shine. For sure. Tip of the week. Another thing that pretty that fun reminds me of is the Uncanny X Men had a Avengers Unity division where they were given a move action and then after resolutions they could use the X Men team ability as a free action. That set came out in uh, May of 2016. And then we saw a similar trait in Rebirth that came out in March of 2019 with the the Titans thing. So I'm I'm just throwing it back to how Titans seemed really out of place because they were literally copying a trait from a set that was, at that point, almost three years old not quite three years old but like they were they were reaching that far back to copy a trait that's what that reminded me of Mm, that's true it's pretty pretty sad well you know what else is sad Simeon? the fact that we have to end the show it has been a great episode guys thank you so much to ian for coming on thank you to malcolm for the questions especially when we're talking about hero clicks in this news 
lull that we're in right now. So thank you guys so much for listening. As always, Dolly Shirk, who you can find on Spotify, iTunes, Podbean, wherever uh, podcasts are found. And now on iTunes, if for some reason you thought we were some ghetto defunct podcast, because when you would search us on iTunes, you would not see our logo. But then when you went in, did the work and like downloaded us, then you would see the logo. Finally got that figured out. Man, who to thunk computers were so difficult. For me, they're like alien technology trying to figure this stuff out. I had to email back and forth with the nice, nice people at Podbean who then provided me finally with a step-by-step guide of fixing the problem. They must think, how does this person even know how to run a podcast? Yikes. But we got it figured out. I'm very happy with that. So that logo is finally there. Check us out on YouTube. We do so much awesome stuff on YouTube, guys. The Extreme Rules was such a fun video for us to shoot. Uh, We do a lot of unboxings. And of course, if you want to get into the game and you want to watch a lot of consistent gameplay videos for Heroclix, if you're learning to get into it, check out our Thursday Throwdown series. We start from the most simplest version of the game, the beginning of time, where it's just powers and figures moving around. And we get, we're almost to modern age right now. We are, this next episode is going to be Uncanny X-Men versus a hodgepodge of sets. It's going to be versus the Age of Ultron movie set, the Captain America Civil War movie set, and then the original Guardians of the Galaxy movie set. Because we kind of messed up on our, our calculations for how sets were going to play out each other in the certain carded age. But still, check out Thursday Throwdown if you guys want to see some really fun casual hero clicks and some older hero clicks that you might not know how they work. Uh, being played so we've played every single set that is a main booster set so far and we'll probably maybe go back through and play all the uh you know gravity feed sets we'll have to see where we're at in the world and how much we want to milk thursday throwdown because lord knows there's plenty of hero clicks to be played so check out our youtube channel subscribe all that good stuff i heavily enjoy i know me and simian both heavily enjoy making content for youtube it has become like our second like pet project besides the podcast. So it would be great if you guys would show some love that way as well. That is all I've got to say. Simeon, if you want to go ahead and read us out of here. Yeah, but before I before I tell you who we're sponsored by, I wanna I wanna bring the mood down a little bit. Today mm. it is November fifteenth, and it marks what would have been the sixty eighth birthday of what I'm going to say, the King of Kings, the King of the Rings, the Macho Man Randy Savage. He was born 68 years ago today, and man, as he brought the Macho Mania and snapping into Slim Jims, getting you for three whole minutes with his bone saws. So happy birthday to one and only Macho Man Randy Savage. Absolutely. Well said. And if you want to pick up a Macho Man Randy Savage figure, guess where you can do that, Calder? It's CoolStuffInc.com, <gasps> where you can find all the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. It's pretty cool. You can check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails. Has Macho Man ever cried? Oh, yeah. Really? Uh-huh. It's okay for macho men to show every emotion available right there, you know, because I've cried a thousand times, I'm going to cry some more. But I've soared with the eagles and I've slithered with the snakes and I've been everywhere in between. And I'm going to tell you something right now. There's one guarantee in life and that there are no guarantees. Yeah. And then understand this. Yeah. Nobody likes a quitter. Nobody said life was easy, so if you get knocked down, take the standing eight count, get back up, and fight again. And you're a macho maniac. Dig it. I know when I've been beat. Yeah, I'm coming home.